watching us duck it out and um and uh the, they don't actually engage in it themselves so it's all about the outsized influence of a small percentage of people us and uh well the the um the the vocal left i guess they were inaudible to the audience here apparently Hmm. Uh, okay, yeah, I think I fixed the audio now. God damn, I missed the one... Okay, guys, you have to send more than one message that says you can't hear people who aren't me. Paulo mentioned it one time. Nobody else did, okay? You guys gotta spam it. <laughs> ah. Right, so, just, I guess just to synopsize what we already said, you know... Uh, Feminist, non-feminist cooperation spiral, uh, copes, um, are we actually winning? <laughs> I don't know. Cope tube, all that stuff. Nick Redding. Uh, that's, a, video that's, about that's the term that I use. I think that, I, that, that's I actually remember that video. But, you know. What's that? Are they, the, the, the Nick Redding video you guys had mentioned, I think I vaguely remember it, but... Yeah, that video... I was, was talking about it, I think. I mean, that, like, that video could have been, again, like, that could have been, like, a whole bunch of copes, but it gave me, you know, inspiration to really just use YouTube and use all these platforms to kind of, like, show people how absolutely psychotic the left is, you know, and, and in a way that the right just simply is not. Um, but, again, like, where we're at now, it just, it, it might have just been cope tube, just like, oh, look at how stupid this triggly puff looks, we're winning when we're not you know yeah cope uh cope maxing to use the incel phrases <laughs> well and the, the problem too is that since so much of the appeal of calling out sjw's and feminists and people who are so crazy was just kind of this like momentary fleeting entertaining spectacle the moment right. anybody who's like anti-feminist or like a trump supporter or whatever the moment you see the worst of that side of it you know, then you have like the counter narrative, and you have this whole problem of like the the very um, you know, very 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 highly intellectual and very intelligent moderates, right, who get to feel superior to both sides, and since they're not interested in like the bigger picture of what any of this actually means, you know, they're just kind of going through, you know, sniping whoever's the most like emotional or crazy in the moment, regardless of uh, of what the the larger picture is. Yeah, that yeah. reminds me, um, there's also a problem of the sort of, um, and this is what most people in academia are like these days, it's why I um, could never possibly go into academia, even though like, you know, I considered it at one point, it's filled with these annoying conformists, it's like, um, uh, basically people who get good grades have been encouraged to think that they are wise, like, um, you know, they, they got... Um, they've got credentials and they've been encouraged to think that that means they're really exceptionally smart. Um, and, you know, they'll ask you for like, um, I think this is the thing with, you know, Vouch, he's kind of like this, like oh. you gotta, you got to study for that. You know, that's like his thing. Um, you know, for the most obvious things, it's like they have no reasoning skills that they don't have any ability to just use their own brains to look at reality. They'll, demand like massive studies for every trivial claim and they don't understand how much like fraud and bias there is in academia so i think well you know what i mean another there's another small time youtuber i want to give a shout out to uh maybe you've seen him his name darren kern he, he came up this dude from florida he's got like what 900 subs or something he came up with this phraseology that i like just basically all progressives do is lie 100% of the time without exception. So I think, I think, well, I think that there's some, a lot of truth to that. I mean, conservatives, they lie most of the time or are kind of dunderheaded and maybe mistaken a lot of the time, but I don't think that there's been a single utterance made by progressives in the past few decades that has checked out. And, and so I think that we might be, getting into a mistake here when we say that they're just ignorant or triggered uh, little lambs who need like a dose of reality or a wake up call. I, th I think that they're just legitimately just deliberately lying all the time. You know, well, this reminds uh, me of um, Lori Penny recently tweeted out this article she wrote where her argument was basically um, there, there is no free marketplace of ideas. That's a, that's, that's, that's bullshit. 
um, the idea that you have like this discourse and that this leads to more truth it's it's completely false that's not the way knowledge works it never has worked it's just a silly romantic notion and like it's so appropriate for someone like her to to have that stance because that's essentially what these progressive types always say and think is they think there needs to be like a clergy of you know of, of authoritative opinion and everybody else is an idiot, and then we need to tell them what and how to think. I think they just want power and money for themselves, and they'll engage in any dishonest sort of, like, you know, vile, dishonest sadistics or tactics to, to meet that end, you know? And I think they know that they have the backing of the banks, that, you know, but all of their 501c3 nonprofits are getting banks during corporate funding now, and all the corporations are changing their... Uh, rainbow flag, get profile pictures and signaling that they support BLM, all that crap, and fun, yeah, funding violent street thug agitations. I think that there's yeah, fucking have you seen liars. Them? I think there's liars you, who are just trying to like grab power, essentially. Have you seen that meme where it's like, um, imagine having the same political views as Burger King and Pepsi and thinking that you're <laughs> a radical? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. And, and that's exactly what I wanted to throw out there, too. I know I've said it before, but it just it can't be stated enough times that these people, they think that they're oppressed. They think that they're saying some some radical and uh, and really, really like like dissident and destructive sort of a thing. And it's like literally every single corporation is bending over backwards to you. These police who you think are these horrible, violent oppressors are literally kneeling to you in the streets. Yeah. Um, and shout out, shout out to Claire who popped into the chat earlier for, um, I just, I love this quote she said earlier of, um, that like, 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 like basically should all these cops who are kneeling to these protesters be summarily executed. And I don't know yes. why, but like, it just, it brings a smile to my face. It's <laughs> and the correct answer is yes. The so. correct answer is definitely yes. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting here like, man, the status quo what did it? How did we get to the point where a secular coronism uh, favors comparably? It, it's, it's By favorable. the way, like, like you know, if it were up to me, I would just go full Iran and like um and just punish all crimes with the death penalty because I'm just kind of crazy like that. But like, no, um, yeah, none of us can ever be in power because like we'll just there'll be so much fucking murder. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. So yeah. did you see? <laughs> and I was just reminded when we were talking about um, corporate progressivism, like Derek did. Do you remember that thing I sent you this morning, was it, um, um, from Paul Joseph Watson, where Google said that they were going to start monitoring all, um, uh, w w what was yeah, it? Um, yeah, they're going to monitor for racism in our apps and everything. Racist, and I'm sitting racist, here like, first okay. of all, bitch, we know you already are. I know I'm and on if you list. Lived, I'm on the, the you, said the N word too many times list. Yeah, and if you live in, um, if you live in a police state like um, the formerly um, the great nation formerly known as the United Kingdom, like um, you you'll so Google will log that information and then give it to the police, and then you'll be going to fucking prison, and your asshole virginity will be fucking gone. It's like oh damn, brutal <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so in the chat yeah people are noticing the video i put on screen um this was this video of these people fighting and at one point someone literally drop kicks a toddler dude, yeah that so I don't, there's nothing really to comment on it but i, I added it to my list of things to bring well, it's, it's i love um I love it's a how systemic that... system of ageist violence. This is a systemic Against system God. of ageist, anti-toddler violence. Um, yeah. Well, and and, I, you know, I and, love and the woman getting her ass kicked, she's a light-skinned black woman. So Yeah, so I was going to say I right? loved how I'm... I love how you were just describing them as people and not being any more descriptive than that. <laughs> just for fact, you know, just nondescript, you know, humoid yeah. shapes. Hum yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I like that. <laughs> it is I mostly think it women, although the, the one who attacks the toddler is, I think, an adolescent male. So, yeah, yeah, yeah here it is. Right. Oh, there it is. Mm. 
And like yeah, I hate was, that too. Yeah. There's so many videos, like just like the one. Um, you guys remember? I hate that everybody's calling them Karens. I hate the way that the 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 mainstream people have hijacked that term. Um, oh, but, like, it's so the, lame. The, the, it's so it's super lame. There's the woman and her husband who are confronted in that parking lot of I think the Chipotle one, right? Um, yeah. No, and you know what? I'm actually mixing them together. Um, because there was a separate one where it was, like, she was trying to get into a car, and, like, what, the thing I hate the most about these kinds of videos is when, like, you have this, like, ratchet mother who's barking at someone and hitting them, and then her, her little, her, her child will emulate it and start hitting the person also, like, because you see it all the time, and it's, like, you're literally watching in live action the corruption of, of innocence and that, like, this is what's being modeled to them, and then they're literally doing it, and it just, it, it kills me. I hate it so much. I don't know. Yeah, it's very brutal. Actually, yeah, th- th- that was the part of the Chipotle one, too, because um, there, there was, I think, at least one child involved in it. I think I don't think he actually like perpetrated any violence but like there's this whole thing where like this just just like it's all like sneak attacks and cheap shots and ganging up on like one person like i think we need to make dueling culture great again like if we're gonna be a bunch of violent savages can we at least have a couple of rules Man, they, they don't have honor. I mean, they have this, like, flurry of blows, like, six on one from behind, just like this, you know. Yeah, it's the uh, Antifa it's just... fights, too, you know? They, their whole thing is they, they and, it, and it's, um, I, I remember Andy No did, like, a breakdown of it, where he's, like, they do it in a calculated way. The first thing they do is they distract you, then someone else comes in and blinds you, and then a third person comes in and does, and then, and then they actually get in their, their blows, and it's it's very... It's like it's like it's like they're playing a freaking MMO where they're all specced for their their particular fuckery, and it, which is quite it's it's terrifying because even if these people are a bunch of like the soy boys and like like weird shaped fat chicks and all kinds of things like 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 with the right strategy and the right numbers it doesn't really matter, you know, and it's just I I don't know what, I don't know where I'm getting at just like. A, it, 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 like, we cartoonize it and make fun of them, right? The whole meme that, like, when the boogaloo happens, like, it's obvious which side should have an advantage, but, um... What do you, what do you think it is with, like, what is it with, like, the open-mouthed soy boy grin thing, since you mention it, where, like, they insist on, like, doing that stupid open mouth grin where it looks like they're waiting to be orally raped or something? It's just, like... I, I <laughs> like well, do they when, they're not... with, when they're presented with a, a fact or something, or when they're about to strike, or what? what uh... When they pose well, in photos, they do it often. It is, yeah, like, yeah. It is, a, it is a, oh. it's a weird phenomenon. I think there, there's a couple of things. Part of it is, um, it's it's sort of like a, a failed attempt at kind of like an ironic humor, right? Is that they're they're trying yeah. to kind of act out like like being shocked or being wowed or whatever. But they're not quite hitting the mark because, like, 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 models have skill in manipulating their faces in very particular ways, and actors, right, have this. It, it's a skill that's developed, right, and like the average person can't really do it, and they're they're trying to do this kind of like phony sort of a thing, and it's just it's missing the mark, and that's where you get that really awkward kind of cringe. So I think I think that's a huge part of all of it um but then right, that, so that doesn't really answer like the question of why it's them in particular that keep doing it it's just like acting it's acting and, and uh you know back to all progressives do is lie all the time without exception it's all yeah. they do like everything down to their facial expressions their their social associations the things they claim to believe everything i think that that, that maybe that does kind of square up the circle i think that that probably does explain it but Man, that that should be a stream, yeah. just soy face compilation stream, and just making fun of them. I don't know for some reason that's like where my mind is at these days. I just like want something <laughs> simple. I, I, I think because of all the fucking. I love YouTube too, you know. But 
Yeah, I, just I love Coke too as well, but that's that is kind of what where we're at, and that's where we've been for uh, a few years now. You know. Yes, yeah, so I don't really. Yeah, I don't really people know. People ask that. me. Um, they they say. Um, like, like if people talk about who should win the election or whatever, and I'm like, well, Hillary Clinton should win. That's the best path for America. And I'm sorry, but, um, you know, the Republicans aren't going to fix anything, so you might as well just, like, let the Democrats have their have their government so that they stop stop killing people in the streets indiscriminately and stop burning things down. Um, and then we're just going to slowly accept the, the, the encroaching communism onto America because it's endemic at this point. There's absolutely no will to fight it. So, um, you know, it's a game of hot potato, and I want to make sure that the biggest most unscrupulous, corrupt communist in the room is the one holding the hot potato when the game's over. I mean, like, um, you know, if I think Trump's going to win again, and if Trump does win again, like, the chimping out in the United States is going to just ascend to never-before-seen levels, it's going to be insanely brutal. Oh, my God, I know. I can't. I don't even want to think about it. Like, and honestly, um... Spiritual man says, is this a libertarian circle jerk? I'm sorry, spiritual man, sir. Everybody who's a friend of mine has libertarian inclinations. Although, actually, I don't know. I guess you you technically identify as somewhat left-wing, but your stance is a little bit more complicated. I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place, but, um, yeah, I am, I guess, skeptical of state control, so... In that sense, I guess I'm, not, I'm, cool. I'm definitely not libertarian, dude. I think that Antifa, BLM, and feminists should be systematically rounded up, put in fucking camps, dude. <laughs> well, but here's the thing: I kind of think that too, but I still consider myself like a narco-capitalist because I feel like they violated the NAP. So fuck them. But but I but I'm, I'm a lot more. That we now observe capitalists are funding their street thug bullshit. So the capitalists well, kind of need yeah, to stop I mean, too. They're, they're corporatists, though, right? They're, 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 I don't they're, know. I mean, either way, it's kind of big. <laughs> something authoritarian's got to go down, I think. You know? But yeah, Redundant Towel says everyone is libertarian to an extent. And that that's something I believe, right? Because um, like, like, like you're never going to find someone who just flat out is like, no, I, I'm going to just steal people's property and murder them when they haven't wronged me. Literally, like, every single narrative, whether it's secular, religious, whatever, they, they always use a threat narrative to justify their violence, and I believe that this is because everybody is kind of implicitly accepting the non-aggression principle. What the fuck is the nap and who's going to take it? Uh, thanks, Hyperbole. Because uh, it's NAP is like a nap. Already uh. are Anyway, <laughs> you had, okay, so I wanted to make sure we got into some of the recent videos that, that you've brought up here. I'm going to pull up your channel here. I should have done, I should have looked into more of them, but I was explaining kind of before you guys had hopped onto the call that, um, like, like your videos, they're, they're a lot more outrageous than they appear because some of them, they kind of need a little bit of like, like a contextual setup. Right, and sometimes it's a little bit hard to kind of see or hear exactly what's going on because, like, you're actually, like, getting real footage of stuff that's actually happening, right? So sometimes I'll be watching it and I'll, I won't quite. Oh, you were on the Ralph retort? I didn't even realize that. Yeah, um, yeah, they were a little bit rug, you know. They. Uh, yeah, no, that that you know. You know. <laughs> I was just listening to their their one with Milo that they had the other day, which um, was was extremely entertaining. <laughs> Why is Milo yeah. at Laura Loomer's house? I don't get it. Like, this is faghag levels that I can't comprehend. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe that this stuff like dropped off in views lately. I guess people are getting sick of seeing this kind of shit over and over and over again. Or, you know, and the algorithmic suppression and all that crap, but yeah, Coke Tube during the Coke Tube days, like stuff like this would get forty thousand to four hundred thousand hits. You know? Wait, I'm sorry, now, I missed like, that. We're all getting kicked off. 
I mean, exactly. like, just um, s sorry to interject, but speaking of um, Cope Tube and criticism of libertarianism, I wonder how Stefan Molyneux is feeling right now after he was um, expunged from YouTube and later Twitter, because, like, from a libertarian point of view, the only thing that's really going on there is, um, you know, basically private companies choosing to stop doing business with you. Like, um, so the only thing he can really say in response is to just make an appeal to conscience. And, you know, YouTube doesn't care. Susan Wojcicki, Twitter doesn't care. So, well, no, but because, because this, this is, again, the, the morality and ethics distinction, right? Like, it's technically ethically permissible, but you can make all kinds of appeals within the realm of morality to say it's wrong. But the other issue, too, is that, like, when you engage with YouTube, they have their, their TOS and absolutely nothing that he did violates it. They gave a very vague reason, which I argue doesn't even rise to the level of a stated reason because they haven't cited where he actually, quote unquote, like, like actually should have violated it, right? Um, where they said it was hate speech, and it's like, well, it Derek, clearly like means the guidelines, nothing. The, gui the, the guidelines are purposely vague so that they can just expunge people at will. Like, that's right, the whole point. right. No, and that's that's yeah, fair enough. Um, but but I mean, obviously, if you tell them that, you know, that's not. I mean, I remember that um, Richard Spencer that, right? Richard Spencer said this, and I agree that um that he he said something like it would be good for YouTube to literally just publish a list of words that you're not allowed to use, because then of course if they did that, then you could work around. Uh, the list of words that they've prohibited, you could avoid using them, and uh, dissident voices could still be heard, you know, they could work around them. But that's not in their interests. They want to purposely keep it vague so that they can just um, boot people off, even if they've, like, never even used a racial slur or anything. Yeah, and it's, it's right. so, it's yeah, so like, uh, shitty the guy and cowardly, you know? I mean, I don't know what else to say. That guy uh, all sucked an example of that like he got kicked off and he's never he's like a boy scout basically in the way he presents his content so yeah. there's really no clear cut standard well the other thing too though is that um you, you have these tech monopolies they're benefiting from government intervention right and then also the moment anybody tries to create an alternative that's going to allow the spicy content um, you know, they, they run into all kinds of issues, many of which do involve the government. So we're in this situation where it's already not really free market, but, but has like kind of the, the guise of it. So that, that's one part of the issue. But like in theory, we could just have our separate areas and, and then just, you know, coexist by not actually coexisting together. You know, and, and it's so funny how often, like, like it's it's just the, the solution is, is there. Just let people segregate each other from each other naturally if that's what needs to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, people, people, are too indoctrinated into, like, people are too indoctrinated into, like, Trotskyist notions of anti-racism. I mean, every, you know, everybody's basically a fucking commie when it comes to race. It's just irreparable, the damage that's been done. I think. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know, and that, well, and that's why I, I make a point of calling out the anti-racists, and people kind of scratch their heads at it because they think like, like so many people that they want to kind of have their cake and eat it too, right? They want to say, well, I I don't support racism and blah blah blah, and the Democrats are the real racists and everything, and uh, right. it, it, it's just, it's missing the point, right? Like I just I I never. It's it's so right. important, right, to, to let them um, the to, to not let the them control response, the narrative. Yeah, the correct response is there is no fucking racism. It's just like some communist bullshit to attack Western countries primarily. Uh, yeah, well, and, and even, even in so far as it's a thing, right? It's like to 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 give racism this much relevance and power, like it's very, very disempowering to, to each individual, right? If somebody says, oh, I think you're racist, it's it's like, can, can you imagine, like, like, 
like like so so your personal well being and your state of mind and everything it's contingent on like whether or not I said a Voldemort word, and like how fragile is that, and and it just it, it, it you see right. it um exemplified in all of these ludicrous demands that they make of society right they're they're these like ludicrously fragile people because they've conditioned them to be that way and then the logic the response from that is that they're going to demand that literally everybody walks a six-foot perimeter around their fucking feelings all the time well it's it's not just the word itself that's scary it's like the social consequences obviously like you can uh, potentially be kicked out of your job and so on if people call you a racist. So there's that, you know, it's like being called um, a heretic, basically, in uh, medieval times. Well, right. Yeah, you're right. I mean, there, it's, it's a system of anti-racism. Like, that's where we're at. That's clearly where we're at, you know, backed up by yeah. a corporate and bankster establishment and the academic class, Hollywood, yada, 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 the whole fucking thing. You know what else is, um, what's funny about it, too, is that these are also the same people who will argue that you're entitled to a job. You're entitled to having, like, the means of, of like, basic, um, you know, to, to basically care for yourself and everything. And yet, the, the moment you point out, like, hey, this cancel culture is kind of not cool, they'll sit there and say, well, you think that people should have the right to fire someone based on their political view or based on this or based on that and blah, blah, blah. Right, like they'll they'll immediately like they'll they'll, they'll immediately become like fucking Ayn Rand, <laughs> uh, yeah. on one side of their mouth, and it's like, <laughs> you know, yep. and, and I think it does go back to what you said. Like they're always they're just always lying. They're always using words as magic spells and saying exactly what they need to say to get the result that they want. Right, they're mystics, right? They're 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 mystics waving runes around. Basically, well, the sad you know? part is um, their magic works. The, 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 yeah, wiz yeah. the wizards are winning. It sucks. Oh, yeah. I see you have the video of me trying to go get fucking groceries and getting insulted by these guys with their masks on. Yeah. You know, I, yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I pointed out because of the COVID muted, thing. You can... I pointed it out because of the COVID thing early on that now leftists have an extended justification to wear fucking masks while they go fuck with people like for a long time. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, and that's... It, well, and the, the funny thing, too, is they, they did dance on both sides of that narrative, right? They'll say, oh, that's ridiculous, that's paranoid, but then also you saw... I think there was an article, or was it like a law or something that said that if you're, if you're part of a group that could be perceived as being criminal, then you don't have to wear a mask. So, so well, literally, the, 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 the consequence of the law was if you're white, you have to wear a mask. But if you're black, you can choose not to because people are going to assume you're up to no good because you're black. And therefore, you can choose not to. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> wow. They, 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 they didn't state it that bluntly, but... I mean, I, I'm going to put the audio on here just so we can hear what these guys are, are saying. Bougie upper middle class... Sorry, I'm going to go back a little... Yeah, so I, uh, you know, sometimes I put the clandestine cam on. Bougie I go out because upper I know middle that class pieces of shit playing bougie upper middle outside. class games. So, luckily this time, or, or unluckily, this should happen. Yeah, you just happened to be recording with these. So, wait, so what were these guys? Were they, these guys were just hanging out out there, or? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They were fucking... They, I was just walking down the block, and I saw them sort of mugging at me, you know what I mean? Sort of acknowledging me. One of them busts his phone out, or whatever. Presumably to... I don't know, maybe thought he was going to take a picture of me. But I said, good evening, or good afternoon, gentlemen. And then they just started in, like, laying into me verbally. Wait, was this and, because uh, you weren't wearing a mask? No, it's because I'm Durst the Worst. Oh, because they recognized you. Okay. Yeah, dude, like, uh, on a semi-regular basis, I get soy boys fucking with me on the street, dude. You know? Like, dude, I live in, well, you know, like, the only city that I know of, the only major city that I know of that had two socialist fucking mayors, right? And we're, like, very diverse on top of that, you know? Well, yeah, because you're uh, in Minnesota, right? 
No, I'm in Milwaukee. Oh, I don't know why I thought Minnesota. No, that's right. You're in. I, 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 Good. Well, just because the way you describe that, that. We, did, we got fucking I, um, the B version of Justin Trudeau as mayor of Minneapolis. I did live in uh, St. Paul at one point. I, I lived in like Frogtown. I lived there and I lived in uh, South, you know, Longfellow neighborhood. And then I also lived in uh, Dinky Town for some time. But yeah, I mean, they, they are extra, extra lefty up there. Yeah. Very absurd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> that's where, that's where I'm, I'm from and have been and, and went to college. And but, um, it's, it's you terrible. Know, Milwaukee, <laughs> is, <laughs> Milwaukee is incredibly blackpilling. Like, I gotta, I'm, I've been scheming on how to get out of here, but I'm just not sure exactly where I can go to hide from it. And, you know, the whole, the whole idea, I guess they call it white flight. You know what I mean? But it's like it's eventually going to come to a point where that's not going to work. You know, because we're not standing our ground. But just anyone who anyone who's not a soy boy, a leftist idiot, you know, people aren't really standing their ground enough. But yeah, I mean, Milwaukee, I mean, Milwaukee might be uh, like 50 years, 100 years too late to save. Yeah, and it comes back to that so often where you say, how can we save America? And it's like, well, it all started in the in the late 1800s when in the first state they gave women the right to vote because they wanted to get more women there and it's like and it's like like, seriously and it's like well you know you you fucking tell me like (laughs) like, give me a counter example i don't know what to do these guys um are they they must be brothers their faces look like the same um this is a funny thing about masks um, people like, like you'll, you'll talk to them and interact with them before they reveal the other half of their face. And it like, will often be like, not at all what you expect with these two guys. I'm expecting, you know, the, the open fake shocked soy face underneath, which that, that that's the real crime that the masks are, are concealing, I think. But <laughs> anyway, there, there's, I'm just going to play the next like 30 seconds or so of this. That's all you fucking are. That's all you fucking are. That's all you are. Take off your mask, dude. You want to talk some shit to me? Take your mask off. Yeah, suck my dick, idiot. That's homophobic, dude. We're going to cancel you now. Oh, let's cancel this guy. Let's cancel him. Cancel culture, dude. Colluding with the fucking Yo. owner class to get working class people fired. Yeah. Yeah, we love that, don't we? We love What's that, up? don't we? Get the fuck out of my town, motherfucker. You guys suck. Accosting me on the street. Accosting me on the street with your cowardly ass fucking masks. Go fuck yourself. Got him. Oh yeah, where am I from? Yeah, you done your homework, scuzzbag. Where am I from, huh? You done your homework. Got these motherfuckers on the, got their faces, got them. I'm trying, bitch. <laughs> yeah, so I guess the first part of it. Yeah, they're being. Yeah. So yeah, they 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 claim to know stuff about me, but they always get it wrong. Like, yeah, he's across the street trying to say like we know all about you, and then he gets to say where I'm from wrong and. Yeah, and it's just, I don't, I don't know, I, I'm a little bit just, like, kind of speechless. Like, I remember I, um, like, like, out of curiosity, me and my friend went to look at, there was a protest and scheduled counter-protest uh, related to, I think it was some, some immigration thing or whatever, um, and, and, and like, we went there just to kind of see the spectacle because like you know we were working that day we figured hey like there's like let's see what's happening but my friend was wearing a pepe shirt and like just because he was wearing that shirt we were confronted by these like antifa retards who like basically like they they threatened to beat us up like because because they didn't like his t-shirt like oh total um I'm, I'm back. I, I, I know. I know. Yeah, I, I know it, it was on the same fired. block where there were cops too, and the, the the cops were keeping everyone separate 
by forcing the protesters to stay inside the Capitol building while the counter protesters surrounded it. And it, it, it just, it was the, it's the classic thing that the cops fucking do is they, they collude with these just terrorist soy dipshits and, and essentially, yeah, yeah. yeah and it, it's, it's, it's infuriating. And that, that's why, like, when people yeah. said, oh, defund the cops or whatever, like, obviously, I think these retards aren't the ones to do it. Um, but I have a little bit of sympathy towards that because, I mean, it seems like a lot of them, they're not performing their basic function. And you're seeing all these people who, like, like the cops are very good at prosecuting all these people who defend themselves, right? They, they know which side to be on to not have repercussions. Right, I, and it's like, I have yeah. a, I, I have a whole playlist of videos that I, I, I titled it "Cops Siding with Antifa," and uh, I, I've basically made compilations of just from across the country in my travels, like of cops either just sort of deferring to or treating them with kid gloves. One of the common things I'll see is um, Antifa will be obviously like the aggressors, right? And uh, like someone like me or Tim Pool or whoever will be standing there trying to record it. And the cops will basically say, hey, don't provoke them. I have this on camera like multiple times. Like, get, you need to get out of here. Don't provoke them. It's like, and, and meanwhile, you see this like crazed, like Antifa masked psycho walking around with some crudely shaped cudgel in his hand, ready to bash someone in the fucking face with it. If they wore a Pepe shirt. But yeah, don't provoke them. Don't provoke them. It's like, why aren't you arresting them and beating them down to the ground? You know, like, what's going on here? Hell yeah, so like, yeah. Know, make treason great again. If we're gonna have a government, like, shit, like, do government yeah, things. Yeah, like, if this, if this had been, if this had been in Nigeria or Saudi Arabia or something, the police would have just killed all these people by now, and, like, it would be fucking over. You know, I'm just saying. Or like that video of Pussy Riot in Russia where like they start their demonstration and literally within like 10 seconds the cops just like start beating them and then they immediately disperse. Lol. <laughs> yeah. Wonder That's it. the job. You know, Toto uh, had a funny story. He said that um, back in February um, a black guy held a door open for him and he said thank you. And then the black guy said "das right" and told him to say it louder, like in a threatening way, as if he'd wronged him. <laughs> That's right. Brutal. Who's opening your door, <laughs> black man? Again. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Uh, just yeah, so cringeworthy. It's also oh, God. <laughs> Okay, I it's have um, I have some other items here. Let me see what I what I had. Oh, um, did you guys hear about the whole Nick Cannon thing? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna watch his video because I wanted to hear all of it like in context, but I thought it'd be really funny. Um, but I, I didn't get around to it. But I, I I think the the cat's out of the bag on it. Like it, it is really funny that you know these, these like BLM types and black power people. They can say anything they want, which I fully support. I think that's wonderful. Like, if they want to blame, you know, you know the, the, the lesbians and the light-skinned black people and the Jews and, like, everyone, I'm like, okay, fine. Like, that's whatever. Like, let it flow through you. Who fucking cares? Because that, that, that should be the attitude. But this tweet I found of this person, uh, racial consciousness, I don't remember when I started following them. They probably said something, like, funny and based, and then I followed them. But he said it should be against the law to publicly air psycho babble like this. This kind of mentally deficient rhetoric is a detriment and an outright danger to society. Which, um, you know, I disagree, but I do love the flavor. <laughs> the like you're yeah. you're too dumb to talk too much because you're making other people dumber. It should be illegal. There ought to be a law. <laughs> Yeah, he's cool. He's the guy who's got like the um, the the monochrome Chad face as like his avatar. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With like but the the fort. Sorry, go he on. He doesn't work for uh, Feedalodian anymore, does he? Oh, Nickelodeon. Nick for Nickelodeon. God, that's funny. 
I hate that. that? I hate the. I hate the word or name canon spelled with two n's because I feel like it should always be one n. Sorry, that was just an aside. I just like I hate like double letters in words. It shouldn't be a thing. Oh, apparently Aiden Paladin is streaming just now. Well, oh. yeah, she's old school. She's she's from that Coke Tube era too. I haven't looked at her stuff in a while. Yeah. We we met her briefly at ICMI last year. Um, God, she's so little. She's a little little girl. She's so little. I couldn't believe how little she was. Is she as yeah. short as is she as short as Liz Hobson? Um. Well, I didn't get to see Liz Hobson in person. Oh. Uh. Yeah, cause she, cause Liz Hobson, she couldn't like catch her flight or whatever for some reason, and they like teleconferenced her in. It was, it was She's like, like it was she, like fucking Natty was there like holding a tablet in front of like a people to be like, here's Liz, and then Liz like saw me through it, and she's like, oh hey, it's you, and I'm like, hey. She's, <laughs> she, she's, um, she's microscopic. She's like four foot eleven. She's like a tiny little. She Liz Hobson is so small that you can't be sure she's in a room. You have to lay lay flower down on the floor to see her footprints. <laughs> she's so little. <laughs> no, I think anyone anyway. might be littler. All these little little like women. A, like Aiden Paladin sounds. I mean, she from to lift or like she sort of projects like a, you know, like a bigger, you know, maybe even dykier kind of like bigger gal you know well but she yeah, does she, she, she does kind of look like that like she has a short hairstyle and everything and like yeah I, I briefly i briefly met her at the uh what was that myth informed and mythicist milwaukee thing yeah 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 um yeah, was yeah. that was karen strawn on that as well like yeah she's a babe dude <laughs> i love karen yeah. i i yeah, she's a I, hero. Um, the, the, the moment I knew that I was no longer addicted to cigarettes was when I was at ICMI and I wasn't at all tempted to try to bum a cigarette off of Karen. Yeah. Nice. I was like, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I'm not I that think, person. Uh, not this time. I would, be tempted to, I would be tempted to just brazenly just hit on her if I saw her. It would just be so obnoxious. <laughs> oh, she's, tried, she's, probably, she's probably used to that. She's I probably used to that. I tried to, to bully her into telling me what her pen name is for her, like, smutty romance no novels, and she's like, never. Like, you'll, you're never going to get it out of me. And I was like, damn, I want that so bad. <laughs> I was like, I promise I won't tell literally anyone. I just want to know. <laughs> she's like, never. <laughs> I think... I think it is technically um, searchable information. Like, there are some people in her orbit who know, but I guess it's a secret, so whatever. I want to know. <laughs> anyway. I was actually pretty upset that Allison couldn't be there in person because I wanted to, to see her again. It's like, sort of a... Doctor. Uh, when I, you know, when you see all these female MRAs, it reminds me like, um, so, um, you know, there are some people who say that um, the, the, there are problems with modern day politics that are associated with too much female influence, um, like uh, the doing away with due process rights and um, uh, the definition of rape basically just being determined by the woman's feelings post hoc and this kind of thing. And while I do agree with that, it isn't obvious to me that the solution is to just expunge women from politics because there are plenty of men. Well, men will just implement what women want. I think that in the days of yore, like um, when, uh, you know, it, it just, I think in the past it just hadn't occurred to women that politics should be their domain. But now that women are in politics, it's sort of, it isn't really possible to unmix that cake. And as long as they're there, they're basically the only salient political actors because male politicians and everybody else will just enact um, women's will. Like they just kind of rule the roost. So that's why I don't agree when people say that women shouldn't be political. Like effectively only women are political. Like we need, um, you know, edgy women to combat this because nobody's... Um, 
you know, to combat the current craziness because nobody's going to fucking listen to us. Like, well, that's actually an interesting yeah. angle, right? Because in theory, if you um, say to women, like, okay, like men are literally, we're stepping out of politics, absolutely no men are allowed, you do you, you know, here's the matriarchy, like, go ahead, run everything. Do, do you think, what do you, either one, like, uh, there, there's a, one of two things will happen. Either women will find some way to realize, oh, it's our responsibility to care about men now and to actually be fair because, like, we have the reins of power. Or what will happen is the, what I think will happen, obviously. They'll, they'll find some new excuse for why this is oppressing them. I mean, I think um, I think what would happen is that they would just end up arguing amongst themselves about um, uh, about whose behavior is more in women's interests, ultimately, or who's um, sort of being a handmaiden for the patriarchy and this kind of thing. Like, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So would no, all that, that 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 does seem inevitable. Yeah. <clears throat> it's brutal. Yeah, because like the even even women who are on our side, well, not that it's specific to them. It's just that, like I said, their opinions are more salient. But anybody on our side of the aisle, you know, because we're pro male, or that terms an oversimplification, obviously. But you know what I mean. Like um, we have to always sort of um, uh, strategically argue the point for um from like um, oh, you know, this would be it would be better for women if we helped men this kind of thing right yeah right and that and you know that is kind of the problem with well one of the many problems with women being centered or platformed in politics is that uh even the most edgy spicy based and red-pilled woman is still gonna pull you know dems are the real racist dems are the real sexists that sort of thing you know i, I can't really think of too many um you know right-wing so-called or like based so-called women that don't engage in something like that granting again granting the left more and more of their premises as we lose and lose and lose yeah, yeah and like the, the sort of the impossibly insipid level of discourse that we see in some countries that have say female dominated parliaments is exactly the sort of thing that the anti-suffragette activists basically warned would come to pass <laughs> Like in Finland, I think it is, or uh, Finland or Sweden, one of those, or maybe both. Like the the female dominated government, they all have to hire uh, assistants. <laughs> nice so fucking in... bong rep, dude. <laughs> yeah, and they're so and they're so incompetent that even the assistants have assistants. I'm not joking. Uh, oh, that wasn't a that wasn't a bong rip. That was uh, moving my like wheelie kind of. I, I had my computer sit on this like wheelie thing. That must have sounded like a freaking. Uh, <laughs> it sounded like a bong oh. rip. I'm I'm fucking stoned now from hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get off that fucking pot. Like I'm I'm stopped for like two or three weeks because I think it makes me extra extra paranoid and extra extra. I don't know, just like less equipped to like combat these people or, or, or also avoid them, you know. Oh, I might yeah. be like, like I'm more with, with any of the scenarios in your videos. Just the idea of like being high while any of that happens is like that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> and I think I have been. I think I, I think in some of those videos I have been a little bit, you know. Yeah, I have been a stoner. I have been a stoner for a while, and you know that's is, part of part of is, why people are fucking lefty. Because when you get stoned, you open up your boundaries more. You know what I mean? I was gonna ask if you were using weed as a coping strategy. Like I probably sort of, yeah, yeah. I I sort probably. of do that. I sort of do that with alcohol now. Like cider is my go-to cope. I'm drinking cider right now. Yeah, in the long term. In the long term, it doesn't really work, I don't think. I think in the long term, it sort of makes more paranoia, more unrest, or, you know, self-doubt or something. At least for me, with, with ganj, you know? <clears throat> yeah. And it fucks with your lungs. You're not as easily able to uh, run away from the hordes as they're trying to kill you, you know? You know, my father was a weed dealer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Like, he had... um 
weed gardens all over the house and like I would sit and smoke weed with my parents. <laughs> well, the, the well, yeah, you... thing, yeah, I mean, like, like now that it's becoming more and more legal, all these same people who were like, oh, don't smoke weed, blah, 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 now they're all like, like wanting to smoke with you and it's, that, that's funny <laughs> thing. Right, right. Well, also, uh, one just thing I've been thinking about is, <laughs> like 30, 30 of the 50 states are legal now. So, well, once that gets federally legal or if the vast majority of the states become legal, I'm, it's interesting, it's going to be interesting to see how these progressives keep with the institutional racism, like Ma, Jamal walking down the street with a blunt gets roped into the pr prison industrial complex. Like, how? what are they going to move the goalpost to when that transpires? Like, even, even now it's ridiculous to argue that given the state of, of uh, legalization, um, but once it gets fully legalized, which is, seems to be an inevitability, how are they going to spin it at that point? You know? That, that's, that's a good point. I mean, well, I mean, part of it, though, is that there, there will be less of a need to because it, it actually will um, benefit those communities and lead to there being less crime. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot of... Um, a lot of people who are affiliated with gangs are going to have a lot of complaints, right, when more things get legalized. Um, uh, I think they're I just going to... Maybe there'll be, like, a more... race to the bottom. You'll have just, like, harder and harder drugs, but part, partly... Yeah, there's still have more fentanyl and crack and stuff. Yeah, like, because I think the points you're making about weed, um, you know, gen generally not being good for people, right, I think a lot of that stands up. I think a lot of that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I do think, though, that, like, just fully legal weed, and frankly, perhaps in some cases, mandatory fucking weed, um, for, from a social standpoint, could actually be a, a benefit, <laughs> um, I guess, relative to the status quo. Um, that, that might be a little bit... Uh, well, how docile, like, how docile, and lethargic, and apathetic does weed make people, you know, like... How, how, how does it, how, I mean, to me, it, like, it, it makes a lot of these people just sort of open their boundaries up and allow for a lot of this stuff and go, well, you know, let, let, they'll just be very, you know, complacent and they'll engage in, like, false equivocations to sort of, like, ease their mind, you know, like, oh, well, the Catholic Church did something, too. Or, oh, oh, the Republicans are bad too, and they'll just sort of, and then they'll just end up never really addressing anything. And I think it's because they're all fucking just, you know, hedonistic and on drugs all the time, you know. And that yeah. that means I, I guess I'm describing myself like five to ten, twelve years ago when I was a shit lib. But I think that rings true for a lot of people, you know. The a lot of people I've known. That... Oh, sorry. What? No. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I think that it partly is um, a question of, of who, who who would be doing it, right? Because there's some people who, like, you know, they're, they're hardworking people that are productive in society, and that's obviously something that you lose out on when they become a stoner. But then you have people who just, like, they fucking suck. They, they can't fucking help themselves but just, like, destroy things and to be a detriment to everyone around them. And it's like, okay, yeah, like... Just like how we tranquilize an animal, we need to sedate this fucker, like, get him some weed so he can hang out, you know, play some Call of Duty, and just, like, chill the fuck out. And, like, that, oh, and, like, the, the, the sad thing is, like, we almost are at the point where poverty can just be optional. Like, the communists, they're, they're, they're sort of right about the one thing, which is that, like, yeah, like, in theory, we can have a society that just, like, sustains you being this, like, retarded couch fucking person that produces nothing as long as you don't like as long as you can resist your urge to fucking burn things down or loot or murder yeah we'll give you your yang bucks your fucking ubi just to bribe you to not be an absolute fucking shit show terrible human being right we're almost at that point of extravagant capitalist wealth though we could totally sustain something like that right but no, no. Instead, it's like it's like it's, it's people who um, could be productive and could be you know a, a, a countervailing effort against all of this, this retarded fuckery. They're the ones who are like, I can't deal with this. I need to cope with weed. And then all the violent thug criminal assholes are doing coke and getting drunk and burning shit down. 
when you know if they would just smoke weed, things would be better. Yeah. Dude, I think, you know, I, I think full on physical removal and, and just organ extraction is what we need for those people. Then, <laughs> you yep. know, just, just just like let's like Japanese World War Two atrocities on these motherfuckers, dude. You know, like I'm. I, 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 that's that's sort of the, the feeling that I'm getting on a day to day basis. Just uh, I don't know the people. I mean, the people I'm you sympathetic, just describe, right? right? Because like things are so crazy that yeah, I, I get the, the the sentiment. You know, like I live I live in a country that literally used to execute people for pickpocketing at one point, down to like the age of eight, and I miss those days. I legit. <laughs> <miss those days>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, right? So if I come in here and I'm like, mandatory weed, I sound like a crazy person. But like in terms of, um, you know, like, like the broader historical picture, that, 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 that's quite, um, quite beneficent. That's quite merciful. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, uh, Dust, do you mind if I send you like a blog article on Discord to read later? It's really long, but it's really uh, good and interesting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cool. The one you sent me earlier about the OK Cupid looks and ugliness was it was like a roller coaster. <laughs> Basically, the TLDR is that um um that uh so sexual marketplace value and attractiveness are correlated uh, but not identical concepts. So if you think of it as like your SMV is just um, the the pool of people who are interested in you. Um, then how attractive you are um, as a woman. Um, sometimes less desirable women actually get more attention from men because men see them as an easy lay. Um, yeah, yeah. Some pe- yeah, some people have called it juggernaut law. And then... The other thing is that, um, so that's one strategy that men will engage in, where they'll, they'll deliberately chase after bottom of the barrel women because they see them as an easy catch. And then the men who aren't doing that, um, basically moderately cute women, so I guess like sixes or sevens, are preferred over supermodel tier women, um, like nines or tens, because they might perceive the supermodel tier women as having too much value. And uh, even if you're comparing women who have the same um, value in the aggregate, like women who are all on average like um, sixes, uh, as in like, um, so that could mean multiple different things uh, for a woman to be, say, a six out of ten. It could mean that literally all the men who were interacting with her profile on a dating website thought that she was a six, thought she was, that she was just kind of cute. Or it could mean that like, six men thought she was a 10 and um and four men thought she was completely unattractive and that's another interesting thing is that um it looks as though the the more disagreement or or the more variance there is in how men perceive a woman's attractiveness the more attention that woman will get uh, because they see her as an easy lay so a woman who has say um tattoos or a hooked nose or something like that um, because men know that um, that other men might perceive that as a flaw, they'll chase her all the more doggedly, and they'll get even more attention. Yeah, it's all summed up. I think the entire article really was summed up by this little um, graph with Garfield on it. Um, I'm just going to yeah, yeah. zoom in on it a little bit. Where they have a matrix of everyone's interested versus everyone's not interested, and then on the other axis, I'm interested versus I'm not interested. <laughs> And um, obviously, yeah. if they're not interested, then they're they're not interested, right? If they are interested, then you have a choice: either they perceive everyone else is interested, in which case their attitude is "I'll take my chances." But if they perceive that not necessarily everyone's interested, but they are, then you know they're, they're more likely to, to act upon it. So yeah, like men understand how high women's value is, basically. And then make all these little sort of game theoretic decisions based on it. Well, and yeah, it's what pretty... I found fascinating about it is that the implication is that men understand how correct the incel community is. Like, they totally get that. Yet, like, people will, they'll say literally the exact same shit 
that the incel community says. All the same black pill kind of things, but they'll find some way to couch it in justifying the situation and saying, but inceldom isn't real. Yeah. It drives me insane. Yeah. So inceldom, inceldom isn't real? Yeah, they, they think they think it's not real. You know, just 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 get a haircut in the shower while you're lifting, bro. You know, like. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think that uh, well, obviously, most of the guys getting called that are probably not. I mean, right? That's just sort of like a feminist way of sort of, you know. Yeah, it's, it's a, like a sex shaming tactic. Right? Absolutely right, and and that, that yeah, that's that's, that's what we call the the femoid that. femoid Godwin's law is whenever you're arguing with a woman, the likelihood she'll make it about sex, you know, approaches one. Yeah, except nobody you can says... Throw back in her face. You can throw it back in her face and just be like, those are your nags, you're hitting on me right now, bitch. Not yeah. a chance. <laughs> nobody really says femoid, though. Like, people just say foid. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I... I feel like I'm I'm halfway between, so I have to use femoid to help. Because if I say foid, they'll be like, "What?" I'll say femoid, and then they're like, "Was that a way to dehumanize women?" And I roll my eyes like, "Yeah, obviously." Like, oh my god, foid, dehumanizing no women. <laughs> yeah, the trigger warning, Matt. Um. Also, I just want to acknowledge uh, Fleegan's on the call too. I would have sent you the link earlier, but we, I had a... Man, the beginning of the stream was pretty rough with me being a, a, a retard. And I eventually got around Hello. to getting my link everywhere it needed to be. <laughs> okay, but yeah, cool. like, um, I just I just wanted to mention this, because um, Durst, I don't know if you saw this study that went out recently, but um, this is basically in line with a prediction that I had made. So um, 31% of, I think it was... 18 to 24 year old men in the United States, uh, 31 percent report no sex in the last year. Right. Yeah. So, so, okay. so I mean, I, I, and some percentage of that might be people who aren't quite that interested in having sex all the time. I get that. Maybe that's marginal for that age group. But um, the, 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 so there's that. There's the vol cell to subtract. But then you also consider that should be men who are at their, as far as their looks concerned, their looks prime, right? Which to some degree might be offset by having more more money and status later on in life, but nope. largely the effects of that are, I think, <laughs> exaggerated. Well, no, there's some, there's some slight percentage of, of a chance that that's offset, maybe. <clears throat> to well, an extremely, uh, like, the whole sugar daddy thing, like, honestly... That's a really marginal phenomenon. Like, the vast majority of women do not want anything to do with men who are, like, twice their age. Like, as I, you know, the average age gap between men and women in relationships is, like, two years, not 20 years or 10 years or even five years. So. Right. So, well, you know, that, that 30%, though, how many of them are just simply not, like, I mean, not just go lift, bro, but, like, simply just not uh, going out there and, you know, just playing the number game, I guess you could call it, just being there and eventually, mathematically speaking, they will eventually have sex with someone. And that's sort of like... Well, well the thing you know, is tricky. The, it's the a tricky thing about question, that is, though, right? Because the, the question is, um, in theory, men could exert um, any degree of effort in order to get pussy, right? And then there's this question of, like, well, what's the limit where we consider, like, you've tried enough? Um, but then, of course, on the lower bound end of it, like, yeah, there definitely are some that, like, kind of rough around the edges and could try some things. And I think that in seldom in the Black Pill community, they, they do have, like, like, since they're dealing with these issues, they have some sensitivity to the idea that men are not quote unquote a true cell right and they do actually geek gatekeep within their own community and tell them like well here are things you can try have you tried this right um anyway i just want to throw that out there i mean the the thing you said to... about, um, you, the thing you said about basically vol seldom and um just not putting themselves out there i guess there have always been guys like that you have to look at what's changed, though. Like, um, why has the percentage of men who are in this position changed so, um, increased so precipitously who are in this position? 
in the last couple of decades. And um, regarding uh, money and status, just throwing this out there, um, you know, uh, I think low uh, income is correlated with basically sexlessness, but that's always been the case. And again, if you look at the change over time, like um, the United States in terms of its unemployment rate was in a much worse position in 2012, I think, was when unemployment was at its peak but in seldom has continued to rise, like according to these figures, um, even though unemployment has gone down. And if you look at Finland, which is a place where the unemployment rate has basically been steady for a very long time, it's been like six to eight uh, percent for 20 years, pretty much. Uh, you see exactly the same trend there. Um, so it looks as though it is, uh, I mean, in terms of the percentage of men who are sexless. Um, in cell essentially so it looks as though it is a function of social media technology and um it's mainly about looks looks are the name of the game in 2020. also if, you're like, add a, if you're like a right wing kind of guy you can get kicked off of the dating platforms too i found that out the hard way because if you because facebook and fucking uh tinder i believe are connected right so i think that if you get banned off of facebook for naughty speak enough um, they'll just fucking axe your Tinder profile. That's fucked up now. You know. May, may I, I got, add wait, no, no, because I've been um, I, I like I've had a Tinder account right, and and had been banned on Facebook like dozens of times while having a Tinder account. But then I didn't get banned on Tinder until I visited America, and I think that some some like pansexual or like trans person or like crazy gender fuck person happened upon my profile and saw that the, the, the anthem, right? The, the Spotify song that you're allowed to link to your profile. I like white girls fuck dogs was there. And I was like, that's super funny. I'm going to put, I'm going to put white girls fuck dogs as my song on my profile. Right. And I think that somebody saw that and they were offended and then I got reported and there's no like appeal system. They don't give you a reason. Your account's just like nuked and there's nothing you can do about it. Like Tinder's not fucking yeah. around. May, may I just, may I just add something? May, may I just add something quite interesting and important? Yeah, to this, this is, this many is people Jay Willie. So, so there's, this is our, our South African friend also. So now, now it's a party. <laughs> anyway. Definitely. That's, why I do that's, why, that's, why, that's my introduction. Nice party. <laughs> Thanks. I really appreciate being introduced. But that makes sense because then I'm going to introduce very uh, important things that people talk about. So many guys have a hard time getting sex. And I'm like thinking like, and I bet you have a hard time to empathize with that because the problem, the reason why that is, is because society tend to be other people be more focused on getting sex rather than getting proper relationships like marriage and family, right? So if somebody's about to get girls to get sex, right, rather than to have a wife or a girlfriend, right, then I don't really have much empathy because I think that going out to try to have sex with someone is wrong. I think that's degenerate, right? Uh, I don't think that should be done in a society to have a, that accept that as the norm and that, and that you can just go out to, to get girls to get laid I think that's not good. I think that's bad oh, to do, no, right? Like, I mean, if you want to get girls, you get it. The, the distinction that you're making, like those 31% of guys, it's not as if, you know, um, they're sexless, but they do have girlfriends or they have people that they're courting or looking to marry. It's like they don't have any of the above. It's just that um, sex is like the yardstick, I guess. Like if you've had sex with someone, it means that you're able to have intimate relations. Um, with a view to then maybe getting married or whatever it is that you want to do. And a significant percentage of, of guys just um, are not getting to that yardstick. And it's something that's easy to measure because you can just ask, like, have you had sex in X amount of time? So. Oh, that's true. But a lot of guys, like at least like me, right, who are so however, disinterested in having sex without being in a long-term relationship, right? So a lot of guys and women, right, and I said, like, are oh, you having sex? And I said, no, because if somebody will go ask those men and those women if they want to get fucked, right? <laughs> Literally. Um, then they would probably say say no because they think that having sex, sex with someone that they're not in 
now in in a in a stable relationship but it's it's wrong and, and i believe that that is a very good sign of um you know by rather than anything negative um but if people are like to, i just want to get laid right then that starting premise is like people then then they already fail because the the, the beginning premise is a bad one and that reflects that reflects more of a bad thing about society yeah? the way that we have that if most people thought men was like thinking that <coughs> they didn't focus on sex they just focus on relationship and the same with women then then women could not then then the top men could not could not sex with 80 percent of all women right that imbalance is because people think of sex as something absent from relationships and marriage rather than something that is in, 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 that is exclusive to that and if that was and if that was more the case, more how it was before, then the percentage of people being incel would drop. And also the welfare state paying women to literally marry the state and fuck around, that also used to make things worse. So we used, we used to remove the welfare state, just kind of fix a lot of the problem. I actually would say that almost all discussion I've ever had with anybody, right, is basically have a problem, right? And the solution to all problems is actually getting rid of the welfare state all the time. Yeah, and, then, and that's the thing is that... It's um, not like, like probably the, the two about. most offensive propositions is one, get rid of welfare, and two, um, bring back arranged marriages. And those would probably be two of the strongest solutions to, to favor and sell them, which most incels wouldn't even advocate for. Uh, they're, they're too good. In like uh, homeschooling, and actually, not you can... off the public school to get indoctrinated and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's just the whole. Oh yeah, I believe that, that setting your girl, setting your daughter into into public school. I think that's basically misogyny in a way. Might be sound, sound odd, but I basically I do believe that because they're basically indoctrinating girls and doing the opposite of what would make them happy. <laughs> well, it's not exactly a function of the schools, though. It's a function of the social interaction at schools. Like yeah, I've witnessed I, this. I hate that. And I, well, I'm, they kind, I'm of, kind of an old timer, and this was already a thing 20 years ago, but uh, the one girl who fucked an older guy told all the other girls to fuck around. And I always suspected that they felt weird about what they had done until they get the other, other girls to do the same. It's a weird, like, I don't want to be alone in this weirdness, so everyone has to be weird like me. Well, that makes sense because that's probably the reason why you are in your like in your country because at least in Africa, right? It people are a bit more traditional, at least in the decent parts that I like to live in. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, did you guys hear about and this the story? I get shot by all these. Antifa in Portland, they tracked down and accosted a random Asian male because they thought he looked like Andy No. Pretty racist, though. I Pretty love it. I love it. Pretty Pretty racist. Racist. So basically, here's how it works. If you're an Asian man, if you're fit and in shape, you're Jackie Chan. If you're a little bit chubby, you're Andy No. <laughs> That's it. There's two, there's two Asian men in the world. There's Jackie Chan and there's Andy No. And this guy, it, it's like, I, I want to see this happen again. Where the Asian guy is like, you think I'm Andy No? Fuck you, I'm Jackie Chan. I'm not fat. Like, who are you calling fat? Fuck you. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Do you guys think that this guy looks like Andy No? I don't think he does. I, I mean, I live in a country that is over 90% Asian. So I... I like, I, I could see differences in Asian faces, right? But, like, I don't think he looks like Andy No, like, at all. <laughs> it, it might take a while because, well, that because I don't know what you're using to stream, but the delay is, is horrible. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. This stream is just a fucking disaster. This stream is the biggest disaster of 2020. Of all the horrible things that have happened this year, this stream is like, uh, I don't mean that like like not not it's it's my fault obviously it's not it's been it's it's been good conversation and we've had some interesting topics too, but I had so many issues getting things set up. I think my laptop is it's having issues. It tells me it wants to update and I tell it it can't update. I don't know. 
Sorry, that was a boring story. But it's kind of fun. I to just, just imagine, it, it, like, it, a pet, can I has updates? Like, no! Because <laughs> updates are never good. They're always shit. Every single Agreed. time. I hate updates. <laughs> if you could at least only updates. choose to update the security stuff and nothing else. Like, if they found a new uh, hole that hackers like to put their programs in, you might, you might want to get that hole stuffed. But enough with the innovator. What, what did you want to say, Jay Willie? Oh, I, I wanted to say it's kind of interesting that Antifa are like these racists. They basically racially profile all the Asians and target them for violence just because of their race. Kind of interesting. Like, I know when I go out, they can lead the left or the true racist, but here's the kick, right? The mainstream left, right? They are so racist that even people who try to be racist cannot out racist them if that makes sense. I mean, it is, yeah, I mean, right? I mean, the, the KKK, I, I mean, what I, have they been doing? They've been sitting on their hands. This is their moment. What are they doing? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Watching the world burn, I guess. Literally watching the world burn. <laughs> and that's kind of what I'm doing at this point. I've given up on all hope of a political solution, and I'm just going to, like, watch the world burn. Because it's, well, uh... Yeah. We're, yeah, we're in a we're in a world post Mark Angelucci, who was like the the one single most effective men's rights advocate ever, and now yep. he's gone. And I, I don't God, I was looking at that video that Warren Farrell had posted in like 2012 of a Donahue interview from like decades prior, and just watching them make all of the same points that MRAs have been always making and watching this knuckle-dragging, retarded, awful audience just, like, dismiss all of it, interrupt them, make stupid arguments, like, just... And it's, like... God. It's so, it's so frustrating. I don't know how they managed to, like, stay... Did you, um... You know, like, I, I don't did, know how they managed to, to, to not be black pilled in all that time. Was it pretty gender balanced or was there more stupidity from the men or from the whamon? Um, no, the, the men were, I mean, the, the women were like as they are. Um, you know, the women were what? The women were just as, as, as they are, as they'd expect. You had this yeah. one woman who was like highlighted in there and she's like, I'm I'm a mother who works in in blah blah blah, and I'm also a feminist and blah, blah, blah and it's just like like she deserves a cookie for for being a selfish, oh, Lord. awful person. Um, it just it was just, just like annoying though. Like at that point, that that's water <laughs> off a duck's back. I just like I don't have a high standard. But then the men are just like, well, the reason we have ladies' nights is to get more men in the bar, as if it's like an argument or a point, and it's it's. And fucking Gloria Allred was on it, and I just, I wanted to die the whole time. Yeah. So, wait, 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 Gloria Steinem. No, 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 Gloria Allred. Who's, like, who's, like, actually worse than, than Gloria Steinem. So what else did the audience say? Oh, I don't even want to remember it at this point. I don't know why. I, I just brought it up because it's, like, it's so old and terrible and knowing wow. that, that, that people like Warren Farrell and Mark Angelucci have, like, lived in that reality for literally decades. And and that Mark Angelucci got murdered and didn't kill himself is, like, astonishing to me. Yeah. Like... You know what that, that really reminds me of something? It kind of reminds me of when Aaron Pissy got those letter bomb from feminists by yep. speaking as, against their... against. What they believe. I think it's yeah, like for the yeah, same reason, actually. We we we, we uh, can't go too far they down her that dog. path because there he was working on multiple yeah. different things, and like any of it could have been related to, to what had happened. So we can't we can't blame the feminists for this one. I mean, we we like in theory, right? Like in the game of Clue, you know, it's it's on the table, but I there there's too little information. And there, there, there's a, a, a very, like, I mean, personally, I had a strong kind of emotional um, desire to say, yes, yeah, the feminists or whatever, but... Uh, yeah, but anyway, we, had we a lost lot of Durst. Enemies. I wonder if um, he had a connection to River or if he had to leave. He hasn't messaged me. 
Do you ever think that, like... Oh, we didn't offend him. I, I can't imagine only, we offended him, but... The only, nice the, the only real solution is that we need to end the universe. We need to end reality and just wipe it all away so that it's like none of this ever happened. Like, if you're being honest with yourself, that's the only solution. And, like, I don't really know how to go about ending the universe, but um, if you have any tips, like, I'm all ears. I guess the heat death of like, the universe accelerates if we keep polluting by just a tiny, tiny little bit. Oh, well. But yeah. I would basically say there's no reason to end the universe because I'm pretty much kind of content with suffering forever. Like, I'm okay with that. Like, I basically have suffered for so long. Anybody who talks to me in, like, one-to-one -one know that I know how it's like to be unhappy and suffering. But some of the few moments I have are good, right? And if I'm about to endure a lifetime of suffering to have these gems of happiness, then so be it. Rather that than suffer all the time. Uh, Dust, we were just um, we were just discussing about whether maybe the solution to all our problems is to end the universe. Like, I think we need to end the universe. Do you have anything to add to that? Oh, and dismantle the systemic system of institutional structural universality. Yes. Yeah, there we go. It's, it's yeah. We don't need to get rid of the whole universe. Just the systemic systems of institutionalized systems of oppression. And universalism. My uh, yeah, my, my yeah. internet. Well, yes. No, I I my I vote for the Hedonian Matrix. Let's just do that. We just need the Matrix, except it needs to have a, a positive value judgment assigned to the invading aliens and everything. Like if aliens invaded the the planet Earth and decided to enslave the human race to suit their own purposes, I don't really have a compelling argument for why they shouldn't do it. Like, if I was a diplomat in that position, I've actually thought about this. I don't really know how I would um, make the argument to them that they shouldn't do it. Because that I'm, assumes that, that human labor would be valuable to them. Like, I, I actually have, if, like, they'd rather just harvest us for something else. Yeah, or, like, whatever. Like, yeah. Like keep us in a zoo. I think that an alien zoo could be okay, right? Because they want us to be, like, semi-happy. I don't know. Yeah, and like they could, um, they could no, engineer, a more, they could engineer a more harmonious social order for us than anything we've ever been able to create. So it could actually be good for us on that. Yeah, there yeah. we go. Based so. in based in gray man pilled. <laughs> yeah. Thought of that I've actually thing thought of a lot of like making fictions about that that alien species that are like super perfect, right? And are much better than humans in every way. That they are like colonizing and taking over everything the humans, right? And then they're basically decide they're so much smarter than humans, right? So they can basically treat humans as humans treat other animals, right? And then they can rule humans and they can just point to what humans do when left to their own own as reasons. To why um, they should do that, and that will like be a lot of make a lot of sense, because they can just point to almost anything, right? Um, well, redistribution of wealth through a state—that's like one of the reasons why humans are completely inferior, right? That that's like a thing that some humans actually believe is a good thing. Uh, so, okay, I'm gonna yeah. strengthen the There's argument that um, alien invasion is preferable to the status quo by bringing up this article I found earlier this week. Um, I think this is the UK. It was the West Midlands Police with hashtag stay alert. I don't know what that hashtag even means. Um, they, they posted a story about, um, let's see, we were alerted to a series of racist messages sent to a footballer today. After looking into them and conducting checks, we have arrested a boy. The 12-year-old from Solihull has been taken to custody. Thanks to everyone who raised it. Racism won't be tolerated. So literally, a fucking 12-year-old playing Call of Duty said too many hurdy words, and they've arrested the 12-year-old boy. And I, I guess saw this footballer, the, uh, he's, like a, he's like a millionaire black footballer, and the yeah. government is siding against this 12-year-old. Like, <laughs> Which one? Yeah, like, I saw... I saw the comments on um, the 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 British government. 
Yeah, the twelve-year-old boy arrested oh. in connection with racist social media messages. No, I've been confused. released under investigation. But yeah, Racism I saw has the no uh... place in society, and we're attempting to contact the football to obtain a statement. Like, can you just imagine, like, adults, fucking professional adults, are doing this in their day-to-day -day life, and they? How could you not? realize how I mean, worthless and stupid you are if this is what you're doing i hate i mean i i can imagine it because i live in it and like i saw the tweet thread and there was the most um, for that um the police department that did it and it was the most black pilling thing or one of the most black pilling things that i've seen and um it has like stiff competition but there were people in the thread saying, like, yeah, we've got to punish hate speech. Hate speech has no place in society. Yeah, no, I saw that, too. Yeah, the, the, this guy here. Arrest the parents, too. He got this hatred from them. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, what a fucking... So are you, um, are you, if you're in England, are, are you, you to... running a risk? Are, are, are you running risk even being on a stream such as this, for instance? Being in... Uh... In the oh, UK? yeah, you are. Yeah, sorry, I should have let everyone know. Um, um, like, my channel is definitely I... on a list. The moment it hits any relevant number of subscribers, they're going to immediately nuke it. They got a whole catalog. I want to I wanna go into politics just so that the opposition research can, like, categorize all of the horrible things I've said. Because, like, I don't want to do it because I'm lazy, but, like, I want to have, like, a nice index of it all. Because I'm proud of it. I don't give a shit. But perhaps to my own detriment. But I usually <laughs> just... Uh... I mean, I've personally, I've, I've kind of just accepted it myself because uh -huh. the technology, like, I know that the technology is going to be used against it, uh, against us at some point. Um, and like, you know, you just have to kind of accept it and try not to think about it too much. Yeah, I don't want to play a game that I'm guaranteed to yeah. lose and that's rigged against me automatically. Like, I, just, I don't even want to dignify the game by pretending right. that there's yeah. a way, right? And, and I'd rather go down with the point that I, I reject the entire framework. Um, and I guess I've been lucky enough that I'm able to not die or be, be canceled in a way that matters. Yeah. But, yeah to, to the early point with the hashtag stay also, alert, wasn't I that would also like to... part of that... Uh, that uh, Tattletale uh, Eastern Germany style denunciation campaign started in Scotland. Oh, is that like, what it was? So it's so, 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 so a racist people. thing? It's like Crime Watch, it's the neighborhood Crime Watch for racism on the internet? I, I mean, that's the thing that they do. I don't know if it's hashtag stay alert. I thought it was connected to that. Ugh. It's over. But here, I just need to. It, it's actually kind of. Kind of, kind of interesting to see that like i basically we get more and more and more proof that means that we were always right we who said anti-racist are idiot anti-racism is is horrible racism is not bad anti-racism is million times what racism could ever be and we get more and more of our proof there's nothing wrong with racism anti-racism is the worst thing ever it's so horrible it's like cancer anti-racism is the yeah. worst yeah, all, I mean, all, no. you take, you take a no, but that was stance all. on that than no, I do. Because all anti-racists are evil. Like I, like, I prefer the indifference, right? Yes. I prefer to all not even have to care about racism. But, like, if people want to be racist, I'm like, well, if it's funny. <laughs> if it's funny, if people want to segregate yeah, themselves, agree. that's great. I don't, you know, they, it's a problem that solves itself. Humans are like, oh, I hate these people. I don't want to deal with them. I'm going to go make my own society. It's like, okay, great. Problem solved. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Anyway, sorry, Joris, what are you gonna say? And in, 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 oh. in, but it's, it's like I would basically the the thing I would like to say also is that um, I don't think racism is the best thing ever, but racism compared to anti-racism is not bad at all. Like anti-racism, that's the problem. That's the worst thing ever, right? Racism. Yeah. Even 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 if I would dislike it, I can't dislike. I don't. I don't have a problem with racism inherently you're some type of racism right but race anti-racism is so much worse anti-racism is, is horrible like i don't like racism but i dislike anti-racism far more than i could ever dislike racism 
Yeah, well, the other thing, too, is any example that anyone can give of racism being bad and racism, then whenever the anti-racists perpetrate all of these things, people argue that it's justified. Yeah, but that's why they manipulated the statistics yeah, in but Germany right impressive. now. Like, they started counting a Muslim person throwing acid in his cousin, female cousin's face because it's an anti-Muslim act, it's a far-right act, so it's a right extremist act, so it counts into a statistic that is associated with neo-Nazis. Oh, yeah, 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 all of the, yeah, all of the, the, the jihadists, they're, well, they're, they're religious conservatives, right? I mean, technically. Technically, Islamists are far-right, yes. Yeah, but, So let's know, put them in the same true. basket to the crimes true. so we can all attribute all of those crimes to this white supremacist. They are growing. Like, I don't see it. I just don't see it. I, I, I see all, how I they of... change the definitions all of the time to make it look like it's growing. Like if a Muslim sets fire to a synagogue, that's a anti-Semitic crime. Check. No, no further details needed for the statistic. Move on. That reminds me. But I'll, um, I would also like to add thing, if they want to call it Islamist. Well, I, I just wanted to mention that um, one point that I've been like constantly if, if they want to call Islamist people is that um, whenever anybody mentions um, you know police crime against black people, I mentioned this is this is actually a gendered issue. It's actually about men and not about black people, right? Um, and I, I've had people who tell me, "Well, do you have the statistics to back that up?" I'm sitting here like, like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> like, like, I was, I was just dumbfounded by that, that request. That, that a person would, would think for a moment to contest the idea that, 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 that the disparity of, like, men, um, quote-unquote targeted, or who are the <laughs> victims of it, compared to, to black people, that, 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 that they don't think that that checks out. Did they have any skepticism whatsoever? Anyway, I just had to throw that out there. There's no evidence that blacks are unfairly treated. By yeah, that's that's anyway. actually. Is no, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, you can make similar arguments regarding men too, right? As you argue, well, men are going to commit more crime, and therefore that's why, right? Um, but I'd argue there's there's definitely a lot more wiggle room when it comes to contesting the the male half of it. Than the black half of it, but yeah, it's like it seems like police shoot black people um about as often as they should. They probably shoot dogs a lot more often than they should, but for black people, it's like about right. I don't care about dogs. Yeah, you compare a black man to a dog. Yeah, I know, Shit. right? Shit. Y'all race. Y'all cancel. Cancel. I can't believe Ashley yeah, just like she doesn't care about dogs being shot. You're you're legitimately a psychopath. Dogs are the best. What's wrong with you? Dogs are great. I mean, like, you just called me a psychopath, which is basically accurate. <laughs> God damn. No, I don't. I don't think you're a legit psychopath. But it's, it's also but... kind of important. Uh, wait. <laughs> it's actually quite funny. Because oh, uh, you go, Jay Willie. Oh yeah, I was like to say something. Okay, <laughs> the there, there was the, says uh, actually they the cult, blacks more. The Islamist like, attack well, is far right. Um, Sorry, I just had to throw that out there. But the, the, the yeah, the, the, that's actually interesting. Um, it's like the thing it, it doesn't that makes sense when they call Islamists attack far right, right? Which is correct, but neo Nazis like Nazis. National socialists are not far right. Socialists are not far, far. What? That's so fucking dumb. Like what? It makes no sense. Oh my god. And also, like, yeah, I it's almost as though they like, have no, a wait, spectrum one, which is supposed supposed to measure one variable, but then they use it to plot out multiple different complex things, and that it turns out to be totally arbitrary. But since it's complicated, you can get a political science degree. And therefore, everybody who doesn't get it is just a big fat dum dum, even though literally the fucking point of a spectrum, by definition, is it's a graph that measures one variable. Sorry, is this, this my my white whale? But it's also kind of interesting because I had this when people talk wanted to say that nationalism is somehow racist, right? And that that's somehow like 
right wing. And then people say like, well, some nationalists are not right wing. And that, no, this is how the solicitor the literally said this. Well, unless someone like the SNP, they are nationalist, but they are not Nazis. So I guess that they are not right wing because they are not socialist, like the right wing na nationalists. And I was like, what do you, what the fuck? Are you an idiot? Really? A person really said that. I'm like, what? So they said, he said it, or he or she, several people, nationalists that are far right are socialists, with nationalists who are on the left are not socialists. Like, that is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And that's like, yeah. no, that is almost the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I have heard something dumb. I mean, just to be clear, um, going back to what I said, I was only joking when I said I don't care about dogs, of course, like, they're sentient life forms and therefore valuable in as much as they're sentient life forms. But like, um, it's just reminded me, you know, when there are those memes about, um, you know, women laughing in the face of suffering men or men who have like, um, you know, depression or something but like this black woman on Twitter who said something like, uh, what was it? Uh, um, any, like the last time a man cried in front of me, I had to force myself to think sad thoughts to stop myself from laughing like can you imagine that that is just so disgusting it's Sheer like an utter lack of empathy emotion well, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I have the exact same feeling for women and minorities just like bitching about oppression but it's, I, I have the exact same thoughts about women and minorities bitching about oppression like I have to stifle laughter or stifle just getting like angry with them <laughs> Awesome. There are some countries where. Is it oh, sorry, you go first. Um, the, 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 like the other. Oh, you got it. Wait, do you, do you want to go first or should I? I got nothing. Go ahead. Okay. Um, but there's actually some countries where the the whole idea of oppression of minorities makes no sense. Most likely, when it comes to I don't know Africa. You're throwing out there. What else? Like if you go, if people are talking about about minorities being mistreated compared to a majority, then talking about Western countries while ignoring Africa, it's like makes no sense at all because like that's like an African problem rather than a Western problem. With the exception of France, where that's being a thing, but not going to that. But it's like they completely ignore the mistreatment of minorities in Africa, which is like actually happening compared to the United States, for example. No, that's just a conspiracy. That's just yeah, yeah, that, that's a conspiracy. Lauren Southern debunked it. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, who, did, who, wait, who debunked it? Yeah, whites are a global minority. It is. Um, it's an interesting point. Um, and they are mistreated where they are well, it's a also minority like, in the country. Much well, more because, than other yeah, minorities. Because, uh, if white people are out of their countries, they're colonizing. But what in Europe? And in, in, a, in a neighborhood where European are a minority, they're still going to be mistreated by the non-European uh, in the neighborhood. Not all of them, but they're going to be to a certain degree. I think it's, it's going to be really funny when, um, and by funny, I mean like horrible, obviously, but this is the misery stream. So we're just uh, laughing at um, how, how close we are to the apocalypse and how terrible everything is. Um, once whites are a minority in America and Canada and Australia and all of Europe, how long do you think it's going to take before like the, the non-white majority governments are just going to declare that the white remnants in all these countries are colonizers and then eradicate them. I think it's going to be... Oh, man. Uh, I mean, like, less that's than 100 not... years. Probably less than 50. But I, I... Uh, sorry, repeat that, Ashley. I just said less than 100 years, possibly less than 50 after they become a minority. But it's also kind of important to know... I guess. I'm just guessing. <laughs> like... That's fine. We, I think we, we as can't long forget as the that Asians the people of the Middle East, um, the like they are also white. For like... Sorry, Jay Willie, I don't know why you always have a delay. But it's also very different. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. 
but I have to acknowledge it. That's part of the issue is we have trouble with a conversation because we step on each other's toes because of the delay. So maybe I need to, I, I, yeah, need to, I may need to run my streams in a less anarchic way. Generally, I think it, works I can try. Out. It, it works out really well, except for that one time when somebody hopped onto the Hangouts and started showing Christchurch footage. That was the one time when my anarchic structure didn't work, and I had to have like some level uh, structure. Was, that was kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie; like I thought it was funny. Like Toto and I were both laughing our heads off. Well, also now I think it's funny now that I'm like a thousand percent <laughs> convinced that the footage is fake. But um, that's another thing. Um, yeah, I can send. I, I I I'm not convinced it's real anymore now that I've looked at it. But anyway, the the point is um. Shit, what was the point? Sorry, I got I got sidetracked. It's early here. The delay. What can I make? I just point. don't get it. Like, no, but now that was you're in point. France, right, Jay Billy? Uh, like, now you're in France. Why is the yeah. delay? Yeah, that, so that's bad? something I also want. Like, I'm not in, in Africa. Yeah, that's that's an issue, right? That's something I don't I, I don't get. Um, yeah, you used to, to have to, a bad to, delay to when you were in about South about Africa. Europe, right? If it's the Middle Eastern people, right? Yeah, but the, the thing I would like to, that's true. But the thing I would oh, like yeah. to point out is that the, the Middle Eastern people, they're also white. So if they were to come into Europe, the white people would not be the minority. If, if the white people were to be the minority, the majority of people would be of non-European or Middle Eastern descent, which will take longer than just having a non-European majority. The word white, like to the vast majority of people, is just a synonym for of European descent. Like that's pretty much what it means. Like I wouldn't call Middle Eastern people white. The Middle Easterners. But the Middle Eastern but, yeah, people. Yeah, Caucasoid, I guess. Indian. Yeah, yeah, Caucasoid is a more accurate, more scientific, more genetic correct um, label than white because white is not correct in the very same caucus with this right but also just to, to highlight some point about middle easterners right is that when a lot of middle eastern people right when they moved to latin america and south africa right the, then they were immediately um classified as white people and treat and treated the same way even while so when there were some like this whites have this and then other people have this right different rights in different places you were allowed to live right the middle eastern people were just allowed to be what were just where you see it as white because they are they look this very similar to europeans um and also i will say the, the, the word white itself is the only usage pragmatic value that have is to have an umbrella term for those of europe and the middle east west asia and north africa otherwise i think it's pretty useless yeah well and honestly yeah. The, the terms seem like they're already too broad to begin with Oh, black. Um, have, have you seen certain Indians? Yeah. Or right. Aborigines, are they also black when they have this same high level of pigmentation? Do they count? Does Lily Singh count as black? No. Well, Australian Aborigines really don't look the same as American blacks. Like, I don't know if I'm just no, no, I'm, I'm talking unusually about attuned to the difference. Like, melanin. Like, Dark, yeah, you're not like, 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 your color standard, yeah, because like, the pigmentation has been misnomer. That I mean, if you go by the color. pure color standard, then you could. I was just gonna mention you could say that um, Europeans, Middle East, and um, some North Africans and East Asians as well, like you could call them all white by the skin color standard, I guess, yeah, right. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. because like it's very hard to even yeah. like sometimes it's kind of hard to, to to even like make out when you see a Middle Eastern or North African person and a European. It's kind of hard to even like tell just by looking at them this one is European or this one is Middle Eastern because a lot of them like if I meet a European with dark eyes and dark hair, right, and they meet a Middle Easterner with dark eyes and blonde hair, right, then to say oh the blonde one that's not the white one, but that's the but the dark hair one that definitely I mean, is you're like Southern. what. It's kind of like southern, southern, southern Europeans, like Portuguese people and Italians and whatever. They're sometimes um, 
uh, people from southern Italy. Sometimes they're hard to tell apart from Middle Easterners, but like northern Europeans usually have a very distinctive look. Like you would never confuse me for an, Ab- yeah. an, an Arab. I'm pretty sure. I yeah. just okay. I just I just I don't want to live in a world where a something about that isn't that. considered part black. Okay, that's just that's my standard, and I'm gonna start from there, and then draw all my distinctions from that starting point. Know. That Sargon you, is part. You don't want to live. All right, I see. Black. The Italians are not white. One thousand <laughs> percent. Derek, he's he's lying. It was always a lie. Have... Like he's. He's not. He's not any percentage black. It was just like l- something he said to like narrative jam SJWs. It's like he's blatantly a hundred percent white. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm joking about that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I mean, it's so. So, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I wanted to bring it back to the actual article here, just because there's a comparison everyone's making. Because I guess the same mm-hmm. account, this same government account was tweeting about a comparison of this 12-year-old being arrested over hurdy words on the internet. That they, they made the tweet where they said that they're, um, they're looking for information regarding FGM, right? And, like, people are calling them out saying, you haven't made any prosecutions. And they literally said, um, education and safeguarding vulnerable girls is the focus, Prosecuting and jailing parents is unlikely to benefit the child. And, like, it's, it's so ridiculous what? because all of this shit is documented, right? Like, they, like the, the parents are arranging this, and therefore it's easy to track them down and to prosecute them. And they're like, oh, no, that's not going to benefit anyone. Um, and, of course, if this is, like, a UK Dude. thing, they're, they're also failing to prosecute MGM, which I have to mention that right. as well. Dude, yeah. So... Yeah. Any form, any form of fucking infant genital cutting should end with a SWAT team coming in and just butting motherfuckers in the skull and saving the kid, putting the kid in fucking child protective services. Obviously, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. It, it would be, be a... harmful to to to. Yeah, it would, it would, it would be it harmful to uh, take them away from those abusive parents. Come yeah, on, like course. parents are important. Yeah. So, but so, but but it's okay because they have higher priorities, which is jailing twelve-year-olds that say the N-word and drink Mountain Dew when they play Call of Duty. Because you know, it's, it's gamers are the real issue. Well, they are rising up. But yeah, the right. FGM thing is they, they, they rose up and to sat back a horrible down. thing I've witnessed. But it, this is like a segue to the horrible thing that uh, there was a. Swiss, that's because anti-racist people. Swiss documentary about uh, female pleasure, hashtag female pleasure, and they had this. Uh, I don't remember which country she came from. She's in the UK right now. Uh, Leila Hussein, saying it's so hard to fight against FGM. If the victims were boys, everyone would be up in arms against it. Oh my god. That's like fucking evil bitch from hell. I hate her. Wait, who said that? Layla Hussein. Layla Hussein. Wow. The daughter of me. By the way, hi, Toto. Oh, hi. Some are saying they want to rape me with a bayonet on uh, Facebook because I. Uh, Wait, who? What? Muslims. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because I'm against circumcision. It's been a minute since I've had you on a stream, so it's nice, nice to see you dropping by. Yeah. And uh, but this time we do have a Durf the worst is kind of a special guest on this one. So oh, this awesome! A, I, I need I need to rename the stream Hello. instead of worst. I need to make it like worst, like your name is spelled. Anyway, worst, yeah. It's the worst year ever. That's just in the thumbnail, but um. Yeah, it's like I think it's spelled like bratwurst, like hey, the, the sausage. Or no, what? it's it, don't you have an e after the u? Like I always thought, like wouldn't be durst the wurst be better? But that's a German thing, I guess. White people are the masters yeah. of like not pronouncing anything correctly ever, and it's like it used to end. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's it's just if, if, it, if it was Durst to Wurst, it would be first to the sausage, can translate it from German. It's a, but it's, it's too late for that now. It's Americans. Well, we thirst the fucking word. Okay, yeah, I know. It's Americans usually Americans who have trouble. Yeah, at least no. we don't spell color with an extra fucking U in -uh. it. I'm never going to let too. that go. Yeah. There's like an interesting story behind yeah, that. Yeah, wider than you, Mohammed. Not that anyone cares, but like. Jesus. So, like, the word, I think what happened is, like, the word color, originally it came from Latin, from Latin. so, like, in the original Latin, it actually was spelt the way the Americans say it, like, um, so there was no U, but then it went through um, into the French language, and the French would spell it with a U, and then I guess in British English, Couleur. yeah, and then I guess in British English, they just copied the way the French spelled it. And then when Americans were starting like their own dictionaries and stuff, they decided to just excise the U and go back to the original Latin. So it's whatever. Yeah. So it is funny because the Americans are like right for the wrong reason. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess not the wrong reason because saying fuck you to the Brits is, a, you know, that's fine. No offense, but yeah. that's fine. So, okay, I want to make sure that I at least mention all the articles posted in the but thing. It, is, it is kind of a trend. Okay, somebody had posted um, BLM leader exposed. They called whites subhuman, genetically defective, and said that blacks are superhumans. I didn't see the video related to it, but this is like, it's really funny. Scott, yeah. you're like saying the Jews run the world or something? I love this shit. Like, um, I don't know if you guys know about the whole thing of um, Yakub, right? And it was, like, some some crazy, like, what, what yeah, was, it was like, like, like black Scientology much. shit where they think that, like, um, white people are or originated from, like, a subterranean race of, like, weird, overgrown, baby Jabba the Hutt people. And, like, eventually they had, like, transgressed against some black people who were like <laughs> aliens that had like super large brains and like to appease everyone they had, like offered um like a daughter to to the subterranean white race or whatever to try to like uh, appease the relations and eventually like one of them um they were, like, brothers or half-brothers, and, like, they had different strategies, and one of them, like, did, like, a fucking Island of Dr. Moreau situation where they just, like, bred out um, people and then, like, would throw uh, ones that were too dark-skinned overboard until eventually they had created a white race, and that's where white people came from. They were just, like, literally evil personified and anyway, it's like it's like a fascinating mythology, and I'm guessing that's where these people are coming from. I actually have a copy of the like um, the H.G. Wells novel. Yeah, I have a copy of the Island of Doctor Moreau. It's really short, um, but it's a pretty interesting novel. Like I think it was written by yeah, it was it's an H.G. Wells novel. It's like hard to find, hard to come by. I might actually Wait. read that, because so, so, uh, the, the funny thing about it, too, is that the movie that was made, like, the movie was a shit show, but, like, there was a documentary made about the making of that movie, and I watched a video of somebody explaining all of the drama and crazy shit that went wrong. It was basically, if, if the year 2020 were making a movie, that's what the making of The Island of Dr. Moreau in the 90s, like, literally was. Literally every <laughs> single thing that could have gone wrong did, and it just degenerated into, like, um, actors backstabbing each other and, like, all of the, the extras and, like, production people just, like, said fuck it and started having, like, hedonistic drug-fueled orgies and, like, there were tropical storms all the time and they were trying to film it on set in fucking Australia in the jungle and everybody was just drunk and miserable and just hated each other <laughs> and like 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 less than half of them even like bothered to show up at the film's premiere because they were like we just burned like millions of dollars to create absolute shit and like 
Yeah, it, it was like, 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 like it, it's like so funny and I need to watch this documentary because I'm sure that like there's so many other things that went wrong that weren't explicated. But um, anyway, <laughs> maybe I'll read the novel so I can see what the story is actually it, supposed it to be. It sounds very interesting. It's so interesting. It's like the funniest freaking thing I've seen all year besides the Eurovision movie that Netflix made, which if you haven't seen that, that was oh my pretty God. good. It was it was amazing. I, I liked that movie. I I laughed and I cried. It was so good. I, I loved it because um it it takes Eurovision, which is like it's really hard to explain to people in words why Eurovision is so funny, and it just condensed everything, and and emulated everything and put it into a story that like makes the whole phenomenon digestible to an American audience. And, like, all of the parodies of all the different Eurovision entries they made, like, they they encapsulated and emulated the Eurovision style perfectly. They did, like, an amazing job with that movie. I was, like, awestruck by how, like, accurate the whole thing felt. It just, it just felt so right. It's it's, it's the best movie I've seen since Terrifier. Yeah, it's but there's a very creepy thing about it. Like... In the movie, they did Iceland should have won, but they broke the rules. And in reality, in the same year, Iceland should have won, but coronavirus prevented coronavirus yeah. prevented it. Yeah, well, like and honestly, visionary shit right here's there. Here's the thing, though. That song in the movie Husavik, if Iceland would send a song like that, they probably would fucking win, right? Like, they, they, they had something kind of interesting with um, Hatari last year, and, and people were kind of sitting there like, maybe this is like a weird side door angle, Iceland will win. But when you look at Iceland's entries, like, almost every single other year, it's like, dude, you guys are like, I'm sorry, you're a B version of Sweden, and that's why you never win. Like, yeah, your songs are always good, they're always decent, but they never feel like winners. And then Iceland, Icelandic people, they always bitch about having never won, and it's like, yeah, because you don't send winners. Sorry. Anyway, I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> I think Switzerland had to send Celine Dion to win. Like, that's a low win. Oh, you know what so song from Switzerland I loved? Um, I, I loved Golden Showers. That was a good song. <laughs> It was called Golden Shower. It was it was, it was it was it was it was like Shower of Gold, right? And that is like this. Oh my God, that's so implicit. Flaming homosexual out there and all gold, and he was like, "Yeah, it's like it's like the showers happening, but everything is golden and it's spectacular, right?" That's like his vision, and it's just like Terry Wogan's on there, and other he's like, "Oh, that's Golden Shower." Like, thanks, Switzerland. <laughs> It's a good song, though. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, I'm I'm quite <laughs> illiterate when it comes to Eurovision, but that that puts a little bit of shame in my heart that we did that. It's a great song, though. It's a it's a bop. It's an absolute bop. Uh. Anyway, I don't know what's a. I guess with this one, I. What else happened? Oh, there's a bunch of murders happening. Do you guys hear about all these murders happening? Somebody was talking to me. They were like, hey, did you hear about the woman who was in a cult and, like, they murdered her children and they just figured the world would end before anybody cared or noticed, but then the world didn't end? And they were like, fuck, fuck, fuck. Like, you now we have to hide these dead babies better. And, like, I'm making light of it, but it's really sad. Oh. There's just, there's so many fucking murders that I can't even keep track of them. There was a gay Hispanic dude that got murdered because he was wearing a MAGA hat. That happened, like, this week. Nobody's talking about it. Oh, yeah, lady you DM'd me that, right? Yeah, yeah, I sent you that one. Well, because I've seen literally two people mention it. One was Chadwick Moore. The other was Liberal Hammer. Nobody else is talking about this. Nobody else cares. And it's like remarkable the, the radio silence that all of these uh, Q tip homosexual uh, news outlets just like don't even care to mention it. Because he was wearing a MAGA hat, so fuck him. 
the the white lady, the white mother who was ganged up on and killed because she said all lives matter. And they they said it like she allegedly said all lives matter. What an allegation! Yeah, like that's a crime. Yeah, that well that that's just like um I've said this earlier before that people will just say oh they said the n word right, and like the majority of people will say oh okay I don't care then, and it's like I want to have a test for citizenship, where. We sit you down in a chair, and people say the N-word at you, and we monitor, like, your blood pressure, and if it rises too much, or if you have some violent impulse as a result of that, we say, nope, you can't be in the country. Like, you, you can't, <laughs> if this is how you react to literally syllables, if you have, like, a fucking two-syllable trigger built into you that turns you into a, a monkey, then you can't be trusted in society. So... You're gonna go with the, the thing test. So basically, just it's, it's not hot test. metal to blood. The what test? An N word test. Oh, was, was that in the, the thing? thing? I never, I never saw the thing. Is it was that the plot? I, I, I didn't know. If if the if the aliens they get hot, they then they expose themselves. The South Park did a parody of that. A heat a wire and put it into a blood sample. Kind of like, if am I the only person who has seen the thing? I've never I'll seen the point box in history. Art. Remember when like Blockbuster was a thing? I have seen go it. Go in and rent movies. I remember seeing the cover. My mother it. showed it to me. It's a good movie, by the way. If you ever ever have time, you should watch it. I'll, I'll remember, remember that one because I've watched like literally every horror movie and I'm at the point where I'm telling people but I, like, used to, it was actually I watched of... the Human Centipede 3 and actually um, the Human Centipede movies the third one was unexpectedly good like out of nowhere <clears throat> out of literally nowhere that movie is actually decent no shit I, I mean I, I fucking I, I like I'm a fan of something like Terrifier but uh, Human Centipede yeah, I mean, that shit was just meant to hurt people. <laughs> you know well, okay, I mean? yeah. T Terrifier, I think, yes. is actually... Um, it's, it's her. worst scene, I think, is, is more disturbing than most of what occurs in the Human Centipede movies. But with the Human Centipede movies, it's just, like, constant. Oh, my God, Korea Man said, what is Human Centipede about? How are you? You're, like, the only person who doesn't... <laughs> oh! <laughs> We're not going into it. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to explain it. You can search it up as long as you're 18. Just make sure it's Google <laughs> Image Search. With the filter off. And then you'll you'll get it. <laughs> so actually has, like, a little bit of that, like, uh... It has that grind. I mean, like, send up, and it, it actually builds some degree of suspense and horror. I mean, Human Centipede, like I said, it's just meant to, like, hurt people and, like, disturb them, you know? Oh, yeah, especially the second one, because the second one, it has absolutely zero classic horror elements in the sense of, like, there being a suspense or things being, like, not revealed or not showed or, like, even, even like, like shock scares. Instead, the main character in the second one is a literal drooling retard who's trying to emulate what happens in the first movie, and he's so dumb and so incompetent, right, that, like, you, you see his tools and what he's about to do, and the people know what's happening, and you see it in just slow, gratuitous detail every single minute of it. And it's, like, it, it's a spectacle in its own right, the way that they did the second one. By far the worst of the three. But the third one was funny because they turned it into, like, a horror comedy set in a prison, and basically this, like wannabe neo-nazi prison warden who's just an insane sadistic motherfucker like decides to try it as a way to reduce recidivism <laughs> which like just the concept of it is funny enough and the execution of it is funny enough that like actually the the film worked in a way that's like you, when you sit down to watch a human centipede movie 
you know that it's just degenerate garbage and that you're just the absolute worst kind of person because you're like, yeah, of all the things I can do in 24 hours, this is what my day is. I'm going to watch this fucking movie just for the spectacle of it, just because it's so dumb and gross and stupid and just that somehow that's where my mind is at. I just want to see something dumb and gross and stupid so I can judge it and feel better, right? And then you watch Human Centipede 3 and you're like, huh, they actually found a way to make that, like, a semi-decent movie, and, like, it just blindsides you with the fact that it ended up being good. I may check that one out. Come to I, think I of would it. recommend but it. I, I'm probably but, overhyping it a little bit, but it's definitely going to be unlike any movie you've ever seen. The first <laughs> I one, one I was on much. Cool. The first one I was uh, on tour with this fucking band, like playing in a DIY punk band, playing like you know house shows and stuff. And I, you know, you're on tour and you're a little weary from the road and whatnot. So I'm napping on this couch, this house was, and I, I wake up mid nap and there is Human Centipede playing on the fucking TV. Oh, that's the worst. Way like, to see the movie. That's yeah, the I guess worst I'm strapped way to in see now. It. I guess I'm strapped in to watch this fucking movie now. <laughs> so that's how I watched it. Like I, I, you know, it was basically accidental, accidental, like waking up to a nightmare. You know. Don't yeah, you know? and honestly, the the first movie, just reading the plot synopsis, is gonna give you all of the value of the movie without having to expose yourself to it. The second one, I guess if you want to really see something that pushes the limits of just, like, incredulous gratuity and bullshit, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to see this from that perspective. If, if that's appealing, which I imagine to the overall majority, that's just, like, you, why would I Yeah, that see one would be worth. But the third one, actually, like, you could watch it as a movie, and it has, like, some artistic merit as a movie. I mean, it's gross, like all the other ones, but like they, I don't know, whatever. The first whatever. one had transformative quality by South Park making the parody, like, Gary, what you want to be to eat? Cuttlefish or vanilla pesto? Why won't it read? <laughs> yeah, that one, was, that one was great. That was pretty funny. But anyway, um, let me see what else. What else happened? Oh, 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 oh. I included this in the thumbnail, so it's mandatory I discuss it. A Muslim teen filed a discrimination claim after receiving a Starbucks cup with ISIS written on it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, this this screams ho hate, hoax hate, right? This seems like a hoax, absolutely. I have no idea, because I haven't looked into it, but... It's funny, but, like, the idea that, like, somebody working at Starbucks, they, like, see a Muslim, and they're like, oh, yeah, ISIS. And it's just, like, legitimately, because they're like, yeah, fuck this Muslim. Seems like... Yeah, it's not an idea doubt, either. Doubt, pressing X to doubt. But, like, is her name... Let's see, her name is Aisha, with way too many H's. One too many H, I mean. Aisha. Yeah. Could that sound like ISIS say, if you said It could Aisha? be just me a mistake. Aisha, ISIS, it, it, <laughs> Aisha? it's very close. And like, oh yeah, ISIS with a silent S, okay. Like, I don't, I'm not quite seeing that. It was a barista. Oh, this, no, I, I, we don't call them male baristas, baristos, they're baristas, so I don't know if that was a woman. Let me see. It was, it was one that was, oh, this was in St. Paul. This was in Minnesota. I've probably been to this one. Let's see. This is probably the one in the midway. This is totally, oh my God, this is the Starbucks in my favorite Target. This is the, this Target store, this is the one that has the liquor store that sells peanut butter porters. And it's the only place in the goddamn world where you can get peanut butter porters that isn't like a proper brewery that has them on tap. Man. I, I, I go there all the time. I go there for one thing. I try to get the peanut butter porters. The first time I ever bought them, and I show up at my friend's house, right, and we're going to play Magic the Gathering and drink, and I'm like, hey, guys, look what I found. These are peanut butter porters. And all my friends were like, that's gross. That Why would you buy those? Why do you think this is a good idea? And I'm like, trust me, I have a good feeling about this. And we drank them, and they fucking, th those motherfuckers 
my friends, those motherfuckers who are my friends, they ate shit. They ate shit because they had to admit I was totally fucking right in my intuition of believing that peanut butter beer was really delicious. And until this day, I've never tasted any alcohol that's better than a peanut butter porter. So anyway, she was at the Starbucks at that Target (laughs) and had a a drink with Isis written on it instead of her name. And she felt a lot of emotions and shock was the main one because I actually couldn't believe this was happening. She told BuzzFeed... (laughs) This is a BuzzFeed article, by the way. <laughs> this is the picture. This oh, is so the good. best journalism in the world. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, imagine. Okay, I need to move this over. Imagine this happens to you and you don't laugh. I feel so it's bad. Funny. For her. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> What if it was just one five one five? What if it was just yeah, it was fifteen fifteen. I mean, order number fifteen. <laughs> John Smith says tragic Muslim on Muslim violence. Well, we don't know if the barista was a Muslim. It was probably a white chick because if you've ever been to a Starbucks, it's always a white chick. So they said it because they hadn't heard her name correctly. But Aisha's the one who said that. I don't know. But was it always my chicks, or did that only search after gender studies became a thing? I mean, wait, ho- wait what did you say? <laughs> like, w- was it also already white chicks in Starbucks before so many white chicks took gender studies and then had to find a job that oh, you can actually Oh, God, get? that's funny. <laughs> yeah, um, there's probably a correlation there, but I don't know. I'm just going based off of my anecdotes. But yeah, apparently their, their official policy is that if they, um, if they can't spell the name, they're supposed to ask you to spell it. What if she's just really sure that she said ISIS? Maybe what happened was um, she just, like, psychologically made that association and thought it was ISIS. But, like, ISIS is a name. Some people are named ISIS, so, like, it's not even... Oh, Dylan wrote a fucking song called ISIS. I think, isn't there a tranny named ISIS? I think there's a tranny named ISIS. There's, like, a metal band called ISIS, I think, or metalcore or some shit. Yeah, and the the Ragnarok online server that I used to play on was called ISIS. Oh, no, that was Iris, not ISIS. Whatever, same thing. Honestly, wasn't it like kind of a meme? People having their their names written wrong on Starbucks uh, cups like like 10 years ago. That was a meme going on. A terrible meme, by the way. Well, yeah. Oh, my name is actually spelled this way, but they spell it this way. That's so stupid. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, and this, this yeah. is the thing, too, is anyway, I used to like work for an answering service, right? And one of our things is that, like, 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 usually you take a phone call, you're taking a message because they're they're at lunch or they're not available or it's overflowing. Whatever the reason may be, it's redirected to us. And our job is to take a simple message. The message will get, like, automatically emailed um, or sent to a dispatcher who will read it off to someone or whatever the case, right? And, like, our whole thing is that we have to spell back any name that we take. And when you're doing it, you feel retarded. You feel like, like oh, John, J-O-H-N or, or J-O-N, right? And they have to say with an H or whatever. And you have to spell, like, names that are kind of, oh, Mary, M-A-R-Y, right? It, it always spell out names constantly, all the time, even though people are just like, wow, I can't believe that they needed to confirm the spelling of my name. But it's like, when you're in a business setting like that, where it's like immortalized through like an email or whatever, names spelled wrong look so unprofessional and so stupid. So like, that's part of the service of having like an answering person is that they nip that in the bud and they make sure it's spelled correctly. And we take the hit of seeming like an incompetent retard that needs to spell out everything, right? But like, I'm trying to imagine having that mindset when, like, literally, I'm going to make you a latte and hand it to you, and you're going to drink it and throw the cup away, and I have to care what's written on the fucking cup, right? 
And, like, when you're in a speedy food environment, I feel like just so much of everything in your being wants to prioritize doing things quickly and not fucking around that, like, you're going to feel like an idiot wanting to spell out things correctly on something that you know is just going to be, like, used up and disposed of within an hour or two. You know what I mean? Honestly, like, spelling back the order, like, so that's a large burger, fries, that makes sense. But the name? Like, what? Like... This is great, too. They said, this is at least the second time a Muslim customer has had ISIS written on their cup at a Starbucks. At least the <laughs> second time. Uh, like, you see how big of a problem this is. This at is horrible. Time. Two oh, times. That, that, that last August. This is last year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, because his name was Aziz. Aziz. That that sounds like ISIS. That actually sounds like it. Aziz could sound like ISIS. Definitely. Like, if you... if his name was Muhammad, and yeah, they like, wrote ISIS, I, I would I would probably agree that this might be a probably was motivated in some way. But Aziz, ISIS, come on. Yeah, that, that that's fine. I can see that. Okay, this is funny too. She says, as for Starbucks and Target, she said, long term. I don't think I would go back to either of those outlets, right? So fuck Target for having a Starbucks in it that had a potentially maybe racist employee in it. Like, that's the argument. Like, fuck all of the Target store. <laughs> like, yeah, that'll show them. Like, I don't... Like, the why would... First of all, why would Target even care if you're not buying Starbucks, right? Like... I don't know. It's just stupid. It's almost, it also makes you think because they probably did it because they knew they would get a reaction out of her. Well, I mean, they but maybe, you see, maybe you they were like, that. fuck this Muslim woman. Let's write ISIS on her cup to make her feel bad. But it's like, it's a name on a cup. Right? Like, imagine I didn't even that know that Aziz could be a woman's you. name. Aziz can be a woman's Aziz name? Can... No, 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 that, that was the other event. The separate event was with the man. Oh, the other Isis was Aziz, and she was Aisha. And she's Aisha, yeah. The, the, which is the name of Muslim, of um, right, but, Muhammad's 13-year-old or 8-year-old or whatever wife. Is Aisha. So she, she, she's named right, after the Right, but what I'm saying the, is that her being a Muhammad Karen over it is just going to like people do since her name is Aisha, her name is almost like more offensive than that's kind of funny, which is kind of so funny. Afraid. Anyway, um, I'm I'm gonna take a I'm mean, gonna I need to go to the bathroom very quickly, but um, <laughs> yeah. the next thing I have here, which I think is gonna be the the last thing for this stream, because I have an errand to to run today. May I say I gotta go into town to in, to renew my my something visa. To do. Which I have mixed feelings about. I'm not even sure I want to. I kind of feel like I want to just go back to Minnesota and just let Black Lives Matter murder me indiscriminately in the streets at this point. But that's a whole other thing. But anyway, um, the Karen law. Karen spelled with a C, which is the most offensive thing about this. I, I, you guys I hear about this shit? The Karen law? What's the Karen law? Oh, you didn't hear about it? It's literally a law designed to crack down I, 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 on Karens. But the, 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 oh, I, okay. I didn't hear about, go to the bathroom first, and then we'll... Well, I can still listen while I'm in the bathroom, so you guys know that I'm not <laughs> talking. Yeah, I think I posted that like two oh, weeks okay. ago. Oh, okay, so you're, you're just pissing while, while it's talking. I have a, an earpiece, so I can hear you with my Bluetooth while I'm in the bathroom. Oh. It's great. So yeah, anyway. I posted an article about that like um, one and a half weeks ago, and I already forgot what Karen with a C means. Because it's so stupid. Here, I'll, I'll post the link to the article in the chat here. Yeah, it's a it's a San Francisco, like California law. But you just need want to say it. Yeah, go ahead. 
Jay Willy. A Muslim has been told something offensive by eating at Starbucks. That that's if someone were to make a parody of stupid thing in modern day United States, that's the exact sentence they would write. Um, by word by word. It's like so fucking funny that, that nobody that anybody is so You're cutting out a lot, dude. That wasn't this is fucking my god. Yeah, I know it's fucking terrible. I don't know what to do about it though. Hmm. Uh I think I will find it's like, but no, the thing I mentioned is that it's so funny that you said this is not the first time they would happen at Starbucks. You're like, oh my God, fucking Starbucks and Muslim people at Starbucks, uh, BuzzFeed, like, like the, this, um, stupidity is like, Can anybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. I can at least. It just cut out for oh, me. Oh, good. Did you? I you saw that was like that was just funny. That, that like the whole like. Can can someone link the the article again? Because I can't find it in the chat. I can't find it in the, uh, anywhere. So if somebody could link me the arc the article about. Um, the Muslim woman at Starbucks. That would be so funny because it's fucking hilarious, dude. It's the yeah, we can both have um, link then, in the diff. Let me post it. But I have the uh, he's getting attacked by the Borg. What did she post it? Oh, hold on. Do you want me to just DM it to you? Or do you want me to? Yeah, I'll just DM it to you in Discord. Okay, you should get it now. Uh, I go take a piss for like 30 seconds. By the way, I'm, I'm really sad. And your awkward silences. I can't trust you guys for one minute to make conversation while I go take a piss. I understand what you were saying. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> but no, yeah, if you go to my Discord, I, I, I just want to say I'm really all my things are. John's with those guys. I'm concerned. I, I just want to say, <laughs> Derek, I, I'm I'm very sad that you didn't do the weekly stream when I posted the article about skyscrapers looking like penises. Oh Which shit! Yeah, Honey Badge Radio. That I mean, they did a video about that one day after you would have had your stream. We would have been first. Oh, we would have been first. Yeah. Well, you know what? For the next couple of weeks, my fucking job. Because there was a COVID outbreak, like, the education department closed all the schools again, and my employer is using that as an excuse to, like, close our centers, basically, which they're using as an excuse to not pay us, which is illegal. It's a fucking violation of our conflict or our contracts, but they know that we're not going to do anything about it because, like, they don't have the money, so there's no fucking point. So, basically, I have, like, another two weeks off. Another fucking quarantine, like self imposed, basically. That's why I want to die. So I'm just gonna, like, hang out in my fucking apartment and eat all my canned food and make more YouTube videos like I should, I guess. I'm gonna try and try and be nice and productive or whatever. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Are there no McDonald's in your area? There are McDonald's in my area. They opened a McDonald's across the street from me like a few weeks after I moved here as if they knew I was fucking coming. And it's a problem because I'm fat now. I'm fatter than I need to be. I'm just going to not eat. I'm just going to starve myself for two weeks until I'm pretty yeah. again. I'm yeah. 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 But it just made me realize something. How long can McDonald's stay named McDonald's? Is it has Donald's they... Oh, 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 don't, I never even noticed that. Noticed what? They're going to be McClinton's. They're going to be McHillary's by the end of the year. 
Oh, because of the Donald. Oh, yeah. Man. Anyway, um, what does Karen even stand for? Oh, okay. It's Caution Against Racially Exploitative Non-Emergencies Act. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, I wish they had spelled caution with a K instead of making it Karen with a C. Saren? I know, it looks so dumb. I hate it. Form an action with an intention. Just be smart. Be smart. So just... San Francisco is a fucking city they called it racist white supremacy to like hose the fecal matter off their sidewalks, weren't they? Wait. They called it, they compared it to fuck, they compared it to people, like, protesting in the 60s getting hosed down. It's like, how do you think of yourselves again? <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, God. That's equating yourself to shit. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, yeah. right. Fine. Here, here's the thing, though. Okay, so the whole point of the Karen meme is that it's usually women making frivolous complaints. That's kind of the, the meme and the idea behind it. Yet, despite the fact that it's, like, deliberately gendered female, they've taken it and appropriated it and made it about white people reporting black people. And, like, the phenomenon that they're trying to reference is the Becky. The Karen was something different. The Karen complained to the manager, right? The Karen was just making a complaint. They weren't calling police. That, that was supposed to be what Becky meant, right? But, like, since Becky wasn't the meme that got popularized, they have just went ahead and stole Karen because they knew what their narrative was before the evidence even came in. And it's just annoying because it's, like, there, there, there's... It, it, it could potentially have been a thing where it's, like, hey, like, women make frivolous complaints against men too often and we need to crack down on this. But since that's not going to be a socially popular narrative, just idiots, you know, ha have put it forth in this way to make it about, oh, it's, it's, it's a racist thing. When in actuality, you know, how, how often is it going to be, um, you know, like a white man making a frivolous, racially motivated call against a black woman? You know, a lot less often than it should, is what I'd say. Yeah. Well, that shit doesn't even really... Right, of course we all know that that shit doesn't even really fucking happen, right? I mean, it's it's usually, like, some brainwashed, emboldened blade, you know, uh, going out of their way to fuck with a Karen, and, and then the Karen just grovels and says, please, hurt me, please don't cancel me. And then, of course, they get canceled, right? Like, that's what it really is, right? There, There is no white on black, like, false 911, like, really, is there? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna doubt it, to be honest. Well, the, the other thing, too, is that it's like, 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 when you're reporting things that you're suspicious of, your suspicions, to some degree, are gonna be based on reality, or at least on, like, a perception of reality. And when crime is this, like, ludicrously disproportionate, of course that perception is going to incorporate race. Like, like, like you're, you're, they're, they're mandating that people don't notice patterns. But honestly, like the, the, the yeah. examples I remember was like uh, this white woman, the fat lady, calling the cops on a group of black people barbecuing in a space where it's illegal to barbecue. And they said that was racist. And I think that's just person being very annoying with like following the rules to a T like I don't know if this woman wouldn't have called the cops if the, there was white people or Hispanics barbecuing illegally because technically she was right it was illegal yeah well and then same thing with um there was the woman in the park right and originally, I was on the wrong side of it. Originally, I thought, oh, this is like a hysterical woman abusing her dog on camera and calling police and making a false report. Which, like, to some degree, she was hyperbolizing and being, like, a retard, right? But the guy was a fucking weirdo. Like, who just, like, goes to a park and brings dog treats to, like, feed other people's dogs, you know? Like, it's just, like... 
I don't know. Apparently, she got charged or, or like, convicted of something. So, however that story developed, but... Anyway. But it's also um, how the Karen law reads. is like, if, if you are calling the cops on some people in your vicinity that are doing something actually illegal... Yeah, I don't think that should apply to that, but it seems like it would be like, oh, are you white and are they black? Like that. If that question is anything a police ever asks, I think that's a racist law. Yeah, well, that's the thing too, though, is um, a lot of these examples are giving involve people who actually are breaking laws. Like, shouldn't you call the police if you see someone breaking the law? Like, it depends on how lenient you are about breaking the law, or what which law they're breaking. But technically, anyone who does that is not doing anything wrong. Well, in these days, cops are lenient up up to and including arson and murder. So, so I guess no, never call the cops on the black person. That's the point. Yeah, cops are kind of retarded nowadays. Slavery, 200 years ago, therefore, um, don't ever call cops on black people, no matter what they're doing. Which way, exactly. Western on a, man? <laughs> but on something only loosely related, earlier when you said, like, uh, for the crime rates, uh, it was a man thing, not a black thing. I wanted to say, but it was a bit convoluted, that uh, yesterday, a 20-year-old Frenchman was... He fell out of the sixth store of an apartment building and the next morning like he fell in at two o'clock uh, uh, is that in the night I don't know a.m. and p.m. well and six hours later they, they all said, already said like there was a two-hour fight going on in that apartment uh, and they they were very sure before any anybody even uh, examined the body that ah, this was an accident like there were two women screaming and one man screaming and he just fell off the balcony by accident and for personal reasons I know that building because uh, my mother's boyfriend's mother lives there and you can't fall off that balcony by accident it has a really high railing this hmm. man was pushed, but the only people who could have pushed him were female. Therefore, it was an accident. End of story. That can't be murder. Because this women don't commit murders, you know? Of course This not. was in Europe. Because yeah. that, that's, yeah, that's weird. Um, yeah, that's fact. So maybe the murder statistics of women is so low because police will just say, ah, nah. Like, he has a knife in his back and it has her fingerprints on it, but it's of course it has the fingerprints on it because she's the one who cooks. Must yeah. have been a stranger who used gloves. I mean, we're able to, like, admit that this might, I don't want to derail it, but like we're able to admit that you know um, there's things about male nature that leads them to be more prone to committing sexual crimes compared to women. But then we also don't have anything, we also don't admit the fact that maybe there's things in female nature that could provide them a more inclination to be violent. And the only reason why they are, they're not really able to, say, I don't know, kill men really is because obviously they're a lot weaker than men you know because like if if you think about it because women really don't love men at least not the way that men love women they're more there's more inclination there for women to just fucking go psychotic on them don't yeah, you think this was something that because could we we've brought this up on other streams too that you know in switzerland you guys had that law that was um basically like like men can uh like like so, so, so yeah, like, like men can um, discipline physically their wives or whatever. They, 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 so some antiquated kind of idea. And then at the time it was banned, all the men were like, whoa, that was a law. Like, we had no idea. Like, we would never even think to do that. And then, you know, you juxtapose that with um, women just making, like, ludicrous 
false claims just like all the fucking time and yeah it's uh it's pretty blackmailing so <laughs> that yeah the beatings will continue until morale improves or you know actually he sent me a video facts. about something about um like like rape accusations in spain um and i, I think i'll take a look at that a little bit later today but I haven't, I haven't quite been in the mood to, to see more evidence on false rape accusations. <laughs> Just cause... Yeah, Spain, Spain is a horrible place for men these days. Seems Literally like no proof necessary. Instant, um, what's the word? Where you can't get close to someone. Um, restrain? Uh, what's the oh, word? Oh, um... Not probation, um, uh, but uh, uh, what's it called? An order. What kind of order? Restrainment? Restraining order. Yeah, restraining order. Restraining order. order. Yeah. Like, they, they issue that before anything is cleared at all. And then they just don't investigate, so it just stays in place. That's, uh, that, that used to be Spain, like, over ten years ago. <laughs> and it certainly got worse since then. Yeah. They took the believe woman argument to the logical end of the process where you just have to assume, like even here, if if there's a call about domestic violence, even if it's a man calling the police, the man will get arrested. (laughs) John Smith clarified in the chat, castration order, (laughs) basically. Yep. Sounds about right, sadly. Alright, well um I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up the stream here because I I got, got got my errand to run. I gotta I gotta go downtown and hang out in the immigration office so that I'm not I don't know, like an illegal yeah. person, I guess. But do yeah, socially I don't know do anything about it. The fucking government's not operative here fucking anyway not that it would even matter but but you know I, I like to keep things above board so I have to go and get my official government stamp on the thing Korean man no I didn't I didn't move my, my um, thing is just uh, expiring so I have to have it renewed yeah I'm still in Hong Kong so they're, 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 they're fairly cool. efficient. Hey, thanks for having me on the stream, bro. No, dude, thanks for coming by. Um, yeah, and if you're ever interested yeah. in hopping on, I, I try to usually have the streams like around this time. Um, like basically how it works, I used to like send people links if I thought maybe they were interested in in hopping on, and then I found that it was, it was stressful. So instead what I do is like if I notice like a friend of the channel in the chat, then I just like hop, toss you the link if you're interested in hopping on. So, yeah. By the way, Durst, do you have a Discord? He does, yeah. Yes, I do. I got a Yeah, I was wondering how I could get in. I got a, a Telegram. <laughs> do, you, do you guys use Telegram and all that stuff? Do I use Telegram? I have Telegram, but I, yeah. don't, I don't use it. I should, maybe I should get in the habit of using that one. <laughs> I remember I told you about um, my skepticism toward parlay or parlor, however we're pronouncing it, um, which was just based on Nick Ricada did a stream where he was going through their TOS and he was like not happy with them at all. So, I so I felt like oh maybe I'll skip that one, but um. But yeah, I love your channel. You get like all the like the most hilarious shit <laughs> that I just like binge watch. It, it, your channel makes me not want to go outside. <laughs> it's both oh, yeah. well, very good stuff and very horrifying stuff. That, that, that's that's sort of the worry that I had. Like, well, it's kind of going to cope tube that we were talking about. Like, I thought that you know we were waking people up, up but I think actually had the unintended consequence of like people getting afraid and not standing up. You know, yeah, like, it's a it's a fair. At the very point. least, people. At the very least, maybe people are informed. Maybe that's the most important thing. Or maybe you're, not being cult- centrist you're cultivating anymore. a silent majority. Maybe part of the part of that that force, I guess. Yep, yep. 
But yeah, yeah. That, I guess that that's kind of the the um <laughs> that, that that was the the tone of the whole stream is everything's fucked, everything's just miserable and awful, and there's absolutely no hope. <laughs> so everyone have a nice day. <laughs>